47 people so far. What? Here she comes to save the day. <gasps> Hello, everyone. Shalomi, my homies. Hello, hello, Franklin Farmstead. Ew. My hands all wet and nasty. Dog slobber. Gross. There she is. Be back and going to get a drink. Okay, go get a drink. T was getting himself a drink. No? Yeah. Oh, she's coming out. I want to hang out because I want to hear the commentary. Hey, I was thinking, tonight's the night, maybe. But how if we're here? But we have an opportunity. Well, he's going to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder how quickly we can. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, what about the other dog kisses? Yes, wet dog kisses. I know. <laughs> this is ridiculous, y'all. And here comes the bear. What's ridiculous? No. You stay in the background. What's ridiculous? 227 people, people now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me help you. Pasta please. night. Mm -hmm. Watch you drink. I gotta put a little bug spray on my leg. Oh my gosh. Get a little bear leg on it. There, you wanna help your views? Yeah. It's not chilly here yet, like, hopefully soon, it's coming. Yeah, you want some bear meat? Oh no, yeah. Sarah. Hang on. <laughs> Sarah's dealing with something. Yes, Sarah. We'll be praying. She just had to evac from a random wildfire. Copy. And, uh, they're seeking refuge in Portland. We'll definitely be praying. Tactical Chicken Channel. Okay. Y'all, all the comments just flew by. I'm trying. Yeah, Colorado's expecting, like, snow next week or tomorrow or something. And which hopefully, like, I know up north they have the Cameron fire. And... It is it is burning a lot of beauty up there. <coughs> Prayers for you, Jay. Yeah, this the cold front's coming. I just can't wait for it to finish. Tactical Chicken Channel. I'm gonna have to change my channel from Homie Biscuits to Tactical Chicken Channel. No, see, this isn't Tactical Tuesday. This is Back Porch Bitchin'. Two completely different shows going on here. That's why we did Tactical Monday yesterday. Yeah, that's why he did Monday yesterday. See, he's here, y'all. Hi. Not really here. He gets nervous when I'm by myself. You need to be supervised. <laughs> Especially with your partner in crime over here. What? <laughs> Call some of our law enforcement buddies to just stand here on the porch. Uh, I don't cause trouble. Your axe is so heavy. Uh-huh. Yeah. I got a table over here. Thank you. I love my porch, too. <coughs> like, it's a major blessing to have this thing and I absolutely absolutely love it yeah we just need a bed out here yeah which we, we've we'll talked like we're gonna make like one of those bed swings and you'll find me over instead of having to like escape to a hotel and be like I'm on your back porch right when <laughs> Renee and I back porch pitch <coughs> too much and we just need to pass out where we sit I wasn't thinking that. Well, I was we'll thinking when I'm, when I'm done with my just, family, I can come hide well, on yeah, the back you can do that too. 
Are we okay. drink that apple? Passed. No. It's passed so fast. Okay, I gotta pull it up on my phone so I can like <laughs> catch up because it cannot. She can't catch read up. it. I just can't catch up that fast. As soon as I'm like, oh, that said, oh, oh, it's gone. Well, glad you're on the good side, not the bad <coughs> side. Zero gravity chairs. That could be cool. That could be. Mixed drinks. Yes. The blackberry moonshine and pomegranate. Mine's peanut butter and vanilla cinnamon Baileys. That's different. That's what, that's what we drank this weekend. Send you a gift. You can email us. NTX Mag. NTX Mag at gmail.com. And, uh, what's up, Monica? What was for supper? Nothing. I didn't eat anything. I had frozen microwave ch Amy's chili relleno something. Big bowl of Mexican slop. But it was good. I don't know. Well, the fence is jacked up. Both the goats are out. Sensory deprivation pod. I've always wanted to try one of those. I think I would either absolutely love it or just be completely freaked out. Freaked out. Yeah. Because I'm like a go. Like I'm a go, go, go. My brain doesn't shut down very well. So it would either be the greatest thing I've ever done or absolutely horrid. Making meatloaf. I love meatloaf. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, asparagus is like Brussels yeah, sprouts. That's how we do it. Maybe well, with sweet potato, like sweet potato coins. Brussels. I'm still canning. Mm. Good job, PJD. <laughs> How much are you canning? What Tacos you canning? and a rum and coke. That sounds good. Fair Nation cookbook. Fair Nation cookbook. Yeah, add that to the list. Right. Some somebody want to volunteer to create that and have it printed? That's a great and... idea. You're in charge of it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. You come up Meat with loaf, it. Meatloaf, baked you potatoes, do it. and corn. That's good, but you need a vegetable. No lids anywhere. Try the Tatler lids. The Tatler lids website still had lids last time I saw. Meatloaf was good, but lasagna is better. We're having lasagna on Friday night, we've decided. For real. Like real lasagna, not like lasagna. I can't, I can't put my in no, you can't put your, I mean, no it might feel you. good. I mean, it is like cheesy, saucy, what? but don't, like an American pie. Oh, yeah. apple pie but just don't, very different. I don't want to eat it after you do that. I can't with these people. I can't. I found lids on Amazon. 72 for 25 bucks. That's pretty expensive, I think. But the Tatler ones are expensive. But they're reusable, like, forever. I think, like, the rubber is, like, I don't know, 10 or 20, 25 times <clears throat> is the, like, expiration, supposedly, on them. But the actual lid itself is good forever. Does the plate Terry get taken down or does it just stay up there? It kind of just stays up there. Yeah. And it kind of looks like a scarecrow at night. Like if you come out on the back porch and the lights aren't on and you turn that corner and you see like a chat, you know, at least the head's missing now. Yeah. The like the My Little Pony My Little head. Pony head was a little freaky. Yeah. The 144 wide mouth lids you. for I missed that. 100 and something. Okay. Were those regular lids or were those toddler lids? 144 wide mouth lids for $136 shipped. Woo! That's what we usually pay around for like lids and jars. Y'all, so like <laughs> if if you got questions for Bear, then you can't ask them. You can't ask them. That's how this works. <laughs> Tactical scare scarecrow, yeah. I don't know what happened to Rainbow Dash's head. I don't know. I just answered that, Opie. It stays there. It just hangs there, and then it freaks you out at night when you walk out on the porch in the dark. Mm -hmm. Do you have a big fan base in Maine? A few? I don't know. Maybe? I know, it's a four people from Maine. Walmart is out, yeah. <coughs> our Walmart is either out or they've got tons. It just depends on what day you go in there and look. I went by there today and there was a bunch of like the tiny little jelly jars, like the four ounces. Um, but that was about it that was on the shelf. Bear, do you need backup? Vester wants to know if you need backup. If Vester was here, I'd hang out with him. <laughs> Bo's on his way. Okay. 
Ola's got, yeah. I called Ola's a coming. friend to, to your come corner. and play with him. <laughs> no, it's like a boxing ring. <laughs> yeah, Me not, and like, Renee are in not one like corner, a naughty you corner. You in the other corner. <laughs> yeah. Any it. sharp, pointy things to review. So I actually do, I have one. Oh, there's one on my, T bought me. I need to get him to my keys. He bought me this. And this is, I gotta open it. I got a new stabby thing, so. It's the Ontario Knife Company. We the bought a gun today, too. Good, Good job. job. Our first, like, real, real like, bought it ourselves. Nobody purchase. else was there. Yeah, we can't pick it up till What'd Friday because there's a waiting period in Florida, which they still have to follow, Since even though have, we're here. Yeah, because our license is in Florida. So yeah, we got a 20 gauge thing. Oh, the shotgun. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Still a good price. They still had them. Like inside. Uh, 200 bucks. 188, 189. We have we have a five dollar. That's awesome. Super oh chat. Oh my gosh, a super chat. We have super For, chat. Yeah, we got. We're doing this on T's <coughs> channel. Oh, fancy. So, yeah. <laughs> Bear Nation. Soft Arborist Prepper, thank you. My donation to a the Bear Nation cookbook <laughs> development. No, no, no. We don't need donations. We need somebody to make it. Might be shine. Because we, we, yeah. Oh, wait. I have a question. What was that? I have a question. What do goats eat? Everything? Yeah. So, like, you can feed them feed, but goats don't need feed if you have natural brushy things it was for in that tree out there goats yesterday. to eat. They'll figure it out. In the wintertime it can get a little um, scarce just depending on where you are because vegetation typically dies except for a couple of things. But uh, like ours Started love in the pine forums. needles. They eat the heck out of pine needles and cedar limbs and they pretty much seem I'm saying I just saw it like basically climbing yeah. a tree yesterday eating the leaves off of it. They, yeah, eat, they everything. eat everything. Yeah. Even the stuff you don't want them to eat. They still Did eat. Say it. They eat poison ivy and everything like Yeah. That's pretty cool. They're good. They're good brushers. Yeah. Oh, tac we can call it the tactical chicken cookbook. Oh, and be all chicken recipes. Ooh. That could be fun. <laughs> You guys, there's like steam coming out of his yeah, head right he's now. He's not enjoying this at all. <laughs> How many people do we have? Insulated tumbler or something? 356. <laughs> I got 364 over here. But yeah, so I have an Ontario Knife Company Model 1 OS-8. Is that like the whole? Oh. Badger said, okay. do you not include I got a that. recipe for lasagna. <laughs> and I like it. This is my everyday carry stabby thing. Got like a good She's been gripping. really good about wearing it too. I've and it's seen got it a the lot. good chafing. Jimping. Jimping. <laughs> Jimping. <laughs> you don't want your knife to chafe you. <laughs> pretty somebody's a pretty scary when it comes to Walmart right now. I don't know. Walmart was fine too. Yeah. Walmart here's like I don't know, there's not much different here. No. Like yeah, you can only go in one entrance and there are half the people wearing masks, but the like the greeters say hi to you. They don't say anything about a mask. Like they don't know. Why do you think I keep telling people to get the F out of the city? Right. Just but yeah, they, keeps going here. Yes, everybody should submit, the, submit their chicken recipes. We can start maybe Badger can do this. He can start a chicken recipe section of the forums and we can have chicken recipe there. <coughs> Need a recipe for beef bacon. I've never uh, made it. Like I've cooked it. it. Yeah. I know how to cook it, but I don't know how to make it. It's the plate. It's the flat end of the beef brisket. It's, yeah, just let him say that again. It's the plate. It's the flat end of the beef brisket. So you would make it like you would do any other bacon. Salt it, cure it, smoke it, and then slice it thin, and then put it in the oven at 400 for about 20 minutes, flip it halfway through. There you go. But that's the key is the oven. You can't, like, pan fry it. Like you would anything yeah. else. Well, I've always baked bacon because I have a big family. So like two pounds. It's just easier. Like a little yeah. eight ounce package. People just eat off the tray. Like it doesn't even make it to the table. Right. 
<clears throat> so I've been doing two sheet pans full of bacon for years, you know, when you're feeding mm -hmm. 10 people. So, I mean, to me, when that change was like life changing, when you figure out you could just bake it and it tastes just the same, if not yeah, better I than like, like better frying than it singly at a time. Yeah. Although I'd love to see that. Oh. Over Yeah, we, are we doing cheap sausage early? I was thinking if we're one? doing a whole one, we can do it any time. Not a bad idea. And then just go ahead and package some it up. I got a ton teach, of the... Teach some boys some processing. Beef, or the butcher paper. Be plenty of processing. Yes, we yes, we are hosting, hosting tonight. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so much easier, yeah. So much easier to bake it. There's a lot of things that you can bake. I've tried the, like pancake on a sheet thing and to me those are not the same there are some things it works for but other things not so much if you've never baked bacon try it like a sheet pan like the jelly roll pan it's got to have the sides on it a good jelly roll pan put them right up next to each other and then bake it it's like 10 to 15 somewhere around there I, for beef bacon i do 20 minutes to 400 20 minutes to 400 and i flip it halfway through oh i usually do like 12 and then I start checking it and I'm poke I'm all like poker <laughs> where I flip it and book it. Chicken, right, chicken chili. Chicken chili. Thank you. Garlic chicken alfredo really lasagna. That could, that could be, be good. good. That could be really good. Garlic alfredo chicken lasagna? Yeah. I've never had chicken lasagna. I've had vegetable lasagna. I which make is like chicken a cream alfredo sauce. pizza. Like and a it's the bomb. sauce. I mean, when chicken fact, what was that tactical chicken fact that <laughs> tactical chicken fact? <laughs> no. <laughs> we are thinking about a midwife kit, mm -hmm. which is a tactical chicken midwife. That doesn't really go well. Curry chicken, chicken. Yep. curry chicken. I make a good curry chicken. I love curry chicken. <laughs> Favorite type of pizza. I just answered that. My chicken alfredo. Pizza. Oh, chicken alfredo pizza. Yeah, that's my favorite. The only thing pigs are good for is tilling or guarding and disposing of bodies. <laughs> but then, what if they die? You're stuck with them. Yeah. Just oh, he's here. Cover him up. Yes. Need it by February. Who said need, need what by February? Thanks. Need it by February. The tactical good chicken I thought? I don't know. I missed it. Tactical broody hens. <laughs> I got so many broody hens, y'all. <laughs> there are little chickens popping up everywhere here. Chicken little fat. Chicken little fat. Oh, that would that be could cute. Be. <laughs> oh, so show my new stabby thing. Oh, good. oh, yeah, she got a little cool one. I got a little stabby thing. So I got. I was looking for a can opener to have because like, I think it was like 4th of July or something, we had beer and I couldn't get it open and Hami showed me how to do it with a lighter, with a lighter, but I don't carry a lighter, even though it's probably, it's supposed to be part of my EDC, but it disappears a lot. Anyway, so I got myself my own, whatever, can, can opener. opener, can't think of these words, yeah. bottle opener, bottle and opener. it was yeah. cheaper than the regular one and it has a little tiny stabby thingy. Look, it's a teeny, where is it? Teeny, tiny, stabby thingy. And Hami, when I showed it to her, said, That's a jugular poker. <laughs> it's a jugular poker. <laughs> it wouldn't do much damage. I mean, it's like, that, it's like an inch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd have to be able to get really close. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's barely, like yeah, it's barely high. the size of your thumb. Tactical can opener, yeah. yeah. Or an eye gouger, like you oh, could poke somebody's eye out, well, for sure. Yeah. So, that's my new stabby thingy. It will do damage if you're motivated, absolutely. Exactly. She's been around bear too much. <laughs> what makes you say I've been around bear too much, huh? Mm -hmm. Which one of my comments? <coughs> Words are hard. Yeah. Eye poker. Yeah. Yeah, make a good eye poker. Stab them in the neck, stab them in the eye, stab them wherever you, you can stab them, right? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that knife in my fighting stance. Yes, Dudley. Yes. I pull it's that like, out and I'm like, I will get you. It's like so much what? muscle behind like the little baby. <laughs> Somebody would be like, okay, this, she might know, like they maybe they'll think they like know how to fight if I totally do that. Cause they're going to be like, she's crazy. It could. Like, you long dangerous ladies. Yeah. Mind their manners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go. Somebody shorter scriptures. Cool. Let's see what else. Crazy does work. That's more of a fingernail cleaning, box opening kind of knife. Yeah, well, I mean, that's really great. It was really there for the can opener part. And I figured it was like, it was actually cheaper than the can openers I was looking right. for. It came up and the can openers were like 10 bucks because I didn't want just one of those little aluminum ones. I wanted one that was like cute or something. The knife was just a bonus. Yeah. And then it was like, it was like two bucks cheaper to buy it with a knife on it. And I was like, that's EDC, right? Like, yeah, that works. How many times did you use the words fighting stance and jugular before you moved? Not much. <laughs> no, I don't think I used the word fighting stance ever before I moved to Oklahoma. Just scream out a war cry. <laughs> a war cry, exactly. Exactly. Hey, Ashley. I just thought it was Ashley. Long time no see. The only option would be to mortgage property. We did have a time last week. Well, you know, I mean, somehow getting out is seems good. Miami is not the place I would want to be. I mean, we were in Daytona, so <coughs> I hear you about that. And uh, But Miami is even farther down, which is basically a bottleneck to get out of the state if anything ever happens. You know, you'd probably do better off going the other way, going to the Keys and just getting on a boat. And, and if you have no connections, you start now at making those connections. People, Bear Nation is everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So get on the forums and go find your people. Go find. And maybe go find people where you want to be. Right. And figure out what they. Or where you've thought about. And y'all may pull you in a completely different direction because we thought we were supposed to be in Arkansas. And that's where we spent all of our time looking. And then. He blessed us with land in Oklahoma. So, yeah, it wasn't, you weren't looking here really. No, <laughs> it wasn't. Sometimes it comes up. And a lot of times you can find other people who are looking for land and be able to go in together to buy things. It's easier, so. Been in Oklahoma my whole life, basically. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Just North Florida. Shout out your state. Yeah, I'd love to hear where everybody's from. <coughs> I'm in Oklahoma. I'll go first. I'm a, in Oklahoma across the creek. <laughs> yeah, former Floridian here. Georgia, Indiana, Tennessee, Texas. Texas, Tennessee, 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 Georgia, Kanoka Stan, Montana, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, Washington. We missed some. Massachusetts, Ontario. Ah, Pennsylvania, Central Texas, Arkansas. Yeah, Missouri, like, South Carolina. Ooh, those went fast. California. People everywhere, y'all. Like there's Mississippi, Utah. Seven thousand. Yeah, we've got people Maybe coming more. from from the next training. We have people coming from yeah. Idaho. Um, I'm trying to think of all the places. I was reading the next training thing today of all the people. Yeah, Oklahoma is awesome. They've got it's got great laws. If you've got kids, it's got great medical freedom and school freedom and. Second Amendment freedom and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. So, um, I mean, Missouri's not bad. Arkansas is not no. bad. I mean, none of those are really. I mean, there's parts of every <coughs> state that aren't that bad. It's well, just I mean, like law wise. Yeah. Like to me, I was looking at like homeschooling laws, like, Second Amendment laws, vaccination, like medical freedom laws. Your metro areas are what runs the yeah. state. Even in Oklahoma, I wouldn't live in Oklahoma City. I wouldn't live in Tulsa. Like so, anyone in West Texas? Yeah, I'm sure there is. There's quite a few people in West Texas. We're doing a training in Texas next month, but it's not West Texas, right? North East Texas. How do I keep pickles crispy? Oh, while canning. So, 
I, good question. You can, I use the extra crisper. Which is like an additive. Right, it's right. Like citric acid. It's like a citric acid, it's got a, some other yeah. stuff in it, I think, but it's an additive that you can just like buy at Walmart. Right, so I use that, but I've also read like you can use grape leaves and put them over. Grape leaves, and I think like, is it oak leaves? Or, like there's no, different leaves. I think leaves. it's mulberry too. There's several different leaves that you can use that have that grape leaves are easily found like on the internet you can buy easily grape leaves <clears throat> did you I mean, what was I that consider a fan did you ever consider a fan b fan b fan b what's that i don't know rural north north dakota that's probably the nowhere land. I do love biscuits, biscuits and gravy. Oh, biscuits and gravy are awesome. I make it with turkey sausage. I have a biscuits and I gravy sign in my house. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she is called Hami Biscuits, so. Yeah. It's just because biscuits. I can eat a Mad lot of Kelt's biscuits. Mad in the house. You can eat a lot of biscuits? I can eat a lot It's not that you make a lot of biscuits? I make them and eat them. <laughs> you make them, eat them, yeah. everything? I support my own habit. You need some carry ammo? Like... Oh, bed and breakfast. Have you ever considered a bed and breakfast? No. There are enough people that just show bed. up here. And then, um, <laughs> that she doesn't need a bed and breakfast. And not all of them are bad. A lot of them are good. No, no. I mean, usually they're yeah. invited, obviously. If you're not invited, yeah, you probably will be shot. It's but, busy <laughs> enough. I couldn't. Well, just between, like, we've got other people who all fellowship together that aren't necessarily close, but tend to fellowship a lot. So... Yeah. Like for Sukkot, I think we're gonna have 120 plus people. Right. So you're leaving me out. Who are we leaving out? How did we leave somebody out? Since we're leaving them alone. How are they we go by so fast. Alone? I don't know. They, there might Sometimes be context it, to that, and I don't. Know. Explain. We don't want to leave anybody out. We're not trying to do that. Oki's biscuits and gravy. I cannot yes. wait. Yeah, we got to Okie? You didn't say Okie's lasagna. You said Okie's biscuits and gravy. It's delicious. Are y'all coming to Tennessee? Not currently, but if you want to put a training together with 20 more people, we will come to Tennessee. We're going to Texas next month. Right. Sherman, Texas. Sherman, Texas okay. and Tulsa. Tulsa. And then Tulsa, so the beginning of the month at Sherman, Texas, near the end of the month, it's near Tulsa. Um, and there's plans possibly for Pacific Northwest and Kansas. And so a lot of people are talking about putting on some trainings and we would love to do them. Just need 20 or more people to do it. And 20 or more people is, and not even 20 yourself. Like if you probably got 10 together that you could definitely agree to do it, we could probably find within Bear Nation the other 10. Right. Yeah, if you're just trying to put on like a Bear Nation training, we do it for like police departments and other, you know, like departments that do training, fire, rescue, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to do kind of the Bear Nation training, right? if you probably, if you got like 10 people, if you've got any kind of a mag there, you know, we would love to come and do a Stop the Bleed training. We have a whole department for that now. We're expanding every day, so. Exactly. I haven't been able to find a mag in Southeast Oklahoma in the forums. <laughs> Probably because they're all administration. <laughs> no, well, we're more east. We're not really south. South yeah, east south is, like is a, I would say like Abel, where, like where, and, and Atoka. Maybe you need to message us, like an NTX mag, if you're in the central Antlers. Yeah, yeah. Let us know where in Oklahoma because there's definitely people in the area but they're probably not people on the forums because they're already kind of magged up right. if that makes sense right I don't know. We're not mm -hmm. oh okay good I'm oh, saying somebody's looking for a mag in the eastern Oklahoma area and I said they're probably not on the forums because they're already like in organization so they probably need to like email us right but Viking Preparedness has, if you guys are not following Viking Preparedness, he has a great post on his Patreon every month that he does for Viking meetings all around the country. And they're like way more organized than we are. And he's like super strange about who can post, but there's a lot of Viking meetups and a lot of Viking people are also bear people. 
<clears throat> if you don't know that Viking preparedness is Pastor Joe, who's also Shofar Mountain, who's also our pastor. So there's a there's lot of people that don't know that. People don't know that. Yeah. Did anybody not, not know that? Also, you found um, it's through Viking. I'm yeah. So yeah, there there's a lot of cross oh, between there. So a lot of times we don't things don't get posted on our forum because they're posted over on Viking as far as meetings and things. And so make sure you're checking out, you know, pay the buck, be a patron of Viking Preparedness and get on his list if you're looking for mags in the Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas area. So. Yes, I'm still a rep for essential oils. And she then is. Another question. She's my new dealer. <laughs> Arr. Totally. She's got me addicted to so many oils now. I, I was literally goods, like dying one day in the front yard and <laughs> thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. And she was like, hold on. She ran and got an essential oil and brought it out to me. It's like, rub this on your belly. <laughs> and it, magically I was better within like 15 minutes. I mean, I've always been an essential oil fan and I use homeopathy and I use herbs and stuff, but it's really hard to treat yourself and know what you need when you're the one literally having an anaphylactic reaction. Right. <clears throat> so for me, I'm great at, meme is great. Um, I'm great at treating everybody else, but when I'm sick, they've always said like, you need to make a list. And I'm like, there's so many options. It's hard to make a list of like what you need. So yeah, I was well doused in oils that day. And now I'm like, I need my own bottle. Um, um, T is shooting the goats with the paint. <laughs> the paint gun. What is it called? Paint pellet things. Paintball gun. Paintball gun. Which oil did you use? I used the Die Guys. Die Guys. I can never say it. Die Guys, which is like for digestion. And digestion I was having an health. anaphylactic reaction, but it was an anaphylactic reaction to something I ate. And so it like, was great. Yeah. Like I was having like trouble seeing and my heart rate went really high and my stomach blew up and um, just treating my stomach specifically and like smelling it and I kind of rubbed it on my nose um with when you put a drop on the back of your tongue oh I did put a drop on the back of my tongue so I did kind of ingest of um I was anywhere I was like like whatever I had to do <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I was never like a, I, hate to, I was never like an exclusive young living person I'd used a couple other brands only the like really top pure ones um that had I always checked testing and all that kind of stuff but Young Living is phenomenal. Like their blends are ones that you can't find those blends with other companies. So if you're looking at single oils, you know, there may be other things, but like their blends, like their RC, my family like ritually like carries, almost like carries in their pocket because we're asthmatic and allergic to like animals. And now we live with animals. <laughs> In Oklahoma, right. not only is they there like... They come to my house that has like the biggest furry beast on the face of the earth. Yeah. Sam and, and Potato. Yeah. And Sam and Potato do not respect personal space. <laughs> no. They get like... At all. They give you that face lick. So there's an RC kind of like sitting on the on the table that everybody knows to come up and you'll see us like <laughs> smelling the RC. I got like a little locket. Cheyenne gave me a little locket to try and I put a bunch of RC on it and I just carry it and I sniff my locket when I need it. So yeah. Mad Cal, we changed the date. They're I'm talking. I don't okay, know. good. You're talking. Shout out if you need this. There's so much research behind EOs. Yes. Hey, Central was amazing. Mad Cal, are you coming to Sukkot? Please answer. Behind no. the camera would like Bear to know. Bear requested. Bear requested. No. We got to have a count. We need a count for Sukkot. It's like 9,000. Yeah. Every day it's like it goes up. Can we build a holiday? It Express works though. Right there. Tea is great. Hint of sweet. What tea? I don't know. Not different tea. Oh. Yeah, there are definitely. I've seen some meetups on the forum. Yes, yes Mad Kelt is coming to Sukkot. Woo! Woo! Crazy. The Amish are giving me a treatment. Oh my gosh, I missed that. I gotta go get Connor. Okay. Or you went go out of my way to help her. Go with you? Sure. You want to take the van? I told Sean to look for Shelf. Harmony's car. Oh. You want to take Harmony's car? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> the boys are leaving, y'all. It's just us. We have 20 minutes to get in trouble. 
we can kidnap him too. Did it arrive unbroken, Ryan? Oh, did he get his Start mug? I hope, so. I hope his mug. No, I think they're at the front door. Fo Daddy, you hush. Commenting on here. The raindrop therapy is amazing. I had a massage once and had that done. It's amazing. On the what was table that? or in the kitchen? Will chest decompression needles be available individually purchased in the store? It's like a medical maybe. thing. Maybe. So like, I don't know. Maybe they could like email us and. Okay. He did email you. Let, let me tell you what you do. Yo. Oh, she can get you some Hillary Christmas. Just anyway. Yeah, I got Hillary Christmas. But let me tell you what you do. Okay. You go to North American Rescue, and I know, we love your business, but there's like a liability issue with decompression needles because it's a needle you are stabbing into somebody's chest, <laughs> okay? So if you F up, like that's major, like you could potentially kill someone Bye, Frank. by effing up. And so it's like major death liability Hey, that we are Debbie. talking about with lovey decompression Dudley. needles. I said lovey-dovey, but lovey so, Sorry, um, I'm interrupting. You are required for to get your own training, and we state that on, like, IFAX and other things that have those decompression needles in them. But go to North American Rescue. They have a liability check box that says, do you have medical device authorization right, which we do to sell them but it's different for you guys to get that and you just have to check the box just... so yeah just check the box anyway you and there's should... your tidbit on decompression needles so we love you you guys are awesome we don't want the liability that comes with that yeah, anything piercing the skin is definitely an issue. Like when you buy a Barifac now, it actually like has you check a little box. Um, but for us to do it on the individual thing, specifically you just buying that, it's a whole level of liability that our insurance doesn't like. So, need more thumbs up. Need more yeah. thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. <coughs> Y'all, if you ever want to see back porch bitches again, you have to hit the thumbs up. We need more people. <laughs> All right, so what else? What other questions? What else Hello, son of God. Hmm. I don't know about that name. <laughs> we were like, we got a little judgy there for a minute as soon as we read it. We were like a little. Hmm. It might be cool, but I don't know. Oh, about wait, that received name. your Verifac today? Verifac today, ladies. Oh, then you were probably a part of the all the ones we sent out Friday. We sent week. out 120 on Friday. It was awesome if you guys follow. T's Instagram, Bear's Instagram, he posted a picture of us trying to like put them all on one cart to take over to the post office. And literally he took that picture and then I found like 20 of them behind Hami's desk and I had to run them over to the post office. So thank you. 454. Just ordered your stomp bag. Tanker. Awesome. If you ordered your stomp bag, it's probably going to be made in the next couple days. Depends on what color. Because sometimes condor bags are backward. We do work too hard, but we also reward ourselves. We do. And we make it worth it. We do. And we have, like, so much fun when we work, y'all. Like, yeah, it's enjoyable to, like, what is this? This is back porch bitches, okay? Right. You don't like it? Bye bye <laughs> We are, um, <laughs> she, <laughs> we are, we are not his wives. She is Bear's wife. <laughs> Yeah, we've I always am, said we ain't never done that like, shit. I'm like his work wife. <laughs> I'm his work to do person. No prayers to so meatless, meatless lasagna, lasagna tonight. tonight. Yes. Yes, well, meatless yeah. lasagna. It's tacos, I think. Cheesy tacos. No, tacos. Okay. Yeah. Um, unleash the blue wrenches. Yes. Um, <coughs> yeah. Taco so Tuesday, I'm, I'm Renee, right? and I am TJ's um, person. He tells to do things all the time because I can't say no because he employs me she's his wife she can she says no mad kelp bringing what oh my gosh you all too bad that Dudley you gotta make her give you a certain middle finger I'll do my fighting stance <laughs> with her little thumb 
It's like your little thumb knife. No, it's like a thumb knife. TJ's assistant. It's yeah, I'm TJ is like personal assistant slash accountant slash admin yeah. slash orderer slash yeah, whatever. Badass admin. Yeah, that's what he calls me. He calls me badass admin. I do harvest my seeds. It's a nice, Somebody it's a asked. nice uh, compliment when he calls me a badass admin. She is badass. Bigger beginner book on gardening. Oh my gosh, there are so many good ones. Um, depends on what kind of gardening. Square foot gardening, if you're gonna do that, like just get the square foot gardening book. It's enough. Like what? Somebody just got the Taco Tuesday. Oh god. <laughs> we we use a lot of euphemisms in this world around here. Uh, I saw the little stabby motion. Yes, yeah, stabby, stabby, stabby. Raised beds. Raised beds is another one. There's some great ones well, about I was gonna say, it really depends on your region. Yeah, well, I would say, like, go find your extension. So, like, put in, like, like I would put in, like, Oklahoma Fall Gardenings. And look for the one that's, like, the Oklahoma University Extension Office or the Arkansas University Extension Office. Whatever that is, they're going to have the best list of what to grow when. And it's, like, you can basically print out, like, a list of you know all the when to harvest when to plant when to do all that kind of stuff to me it's just stick with that then it depends on what you how you want to grow like are you container right. gardening are you raised bed gardening are you back row to cropping. eating row crop yeah what do you want to plant and what is your region do you need a greenhouse do you you know and then i would be, there's some great books out there but like pick based on what you think you possibly need for your region yeah. Um, so that would be, I guess, helpful. Like, what's your region? Mm -hmm. And seed safe. Because, like, your plants adapt. Does Cody still need help? Uh, no idea. Yeah. Cody, I don't know. Cody moved into a new place this weekend. He's got all He's got a going much on. bigger shop, which is awesome. And air conditioning, I heard. He never had air conditioning oh, before, nice. y'all. He was making, whatever, a ton of Bearfax every week with no air conditioning. Yeah. So. And it's hot. It's hot, y'all, in the summertime. That just hurt my brain. What, the gardening talk? Pick one and go for it. That's probably the best thing to do. Pick one, throw some seeds in some dirt, and you will yeah, learn along just the way. Yeah, try. Like, I live in Washington. I do not know Washington area. Try the extension office oh, and gosh, ask them. Hear. And that's another thing is people don't use those extension offices enough. Mm -hmm. Like, call the extension office. There is a little old lady who's been gardening for 100 years in the extension office or works in the local gardening club who, like, wants to tell you everything that you need about oh, yeah, how to garden. Oh, yeah, they're passionate. Like, super passionate. Find yourself, like, the ladies' garden club in mm -hmm. your town and, like, call that little secretary and be like, what would you recommend? They right. seriously will talk to you for hours and give you probably better advice than any book will give you. And if then if they say raise beds... Go to the Amazon and look for a raised bed gardening or square foot gardening or containers or and whatever. And you can also need. ask your neighbor, like, if you drive by a place that garden. has, like, a really awesome garden that you like, can knock, see, knock, knock. knock and say, hey, like, they will probably have great pride in extension office of soil testing, too. Yep. How well their garden's doing, and they will want to brag about it, They'll a.k.a. Give, me... give you pointers. <clears throat> Does Sojourn so, Gear more people? Message Sojourn Gear because I don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we just I can't speak for Cody. Um, and he's Sojourn Gear, he and is so his own. Yeah, so he's got all kinds of stuff going on. He's got he has all kinds of custom stuff. So yeah. What was yeah. that? I don't know. Damn yeah. something. People, are sorry to. <laughs> well, that wasn't very nice. What I just read. Next story about a guy taught me everything I know. Yeah. yeah. Find somebody who is like got dirt under their fingernails and has been gardening. Dirks are raising pork or rabbits for dog food. Mm, I, I would say, well, one, pork, no, because you can't touch the dead carcass. So you couldn't ever kill it to use for dog food. It's not right. food. Rabbits, I've heard some people have you, done. You but, have the potential to like let the rabbit go and basically the dog like chase it down <coughs> to kill not, it but the tourist says basically you're not supposed to touch yeah. the dead carcass of unclean things so we like, couldn't kill my it. dog can <laughs> he can eat the processed bone like we always save him some lamb bones uh chicken bones or turkey bones that are large enough that they 
that you can like nom on them without it just splintering, you know, like rib bones, no good. Yeah. Um, but that's what he eats as well as regular dog yeah, food. Yeah, and rabbits in the garden, just ask her, she like, what do you call it, rabbit jihad? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, they were doing rabbits before they were Torah, the rabbits got out and ate the entire garden. Yeah, and I got pissed and killed them all. Yeah, and that was the last But we were the also like feeling convicted to follow Torah. So, you know, was that like a yah thing or was you have one big dog? Currently they have one big dog. One but, big dog. One but ninety five pound dog. Big dog. As soon as we get done. I Marigolds will. are great revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Spray some bug spray. I'm getting it. Yeah. Alive. I put it somewhere. It's missing. I had it because I sprayed my legs. <laughs> Not to be confused with Rocky Bunny Jihad. Exactly. Right. So, like. Strawberries are one of those things that they're kind of picky until they're like established. Um, they also like to run. So that's why most strawberries do really, really good in like hanging baskets or up on a mound where you have basically like a three foot circumference, circumference or diameter. I don't know. Three foot around <laughs> hill that they grow on so that way they can uh, they can run <coughs> and grow and then they send out shoots and they'll spread and prayerfully what was that prayerfully what I probably may have to use rabbits chase down the chickens Get, get you a farm no, hand. No, you get the chickens at night when they go to roost. They don't move. They don't fly away from you. you yeah, snatch and grab and bag those suckers. <laughs> Super easy. Like, chasing a chicken during the daytime is fruitless. <laughs> like, that's why we shoot them. Is because you can't... Yeah, if it's during the day, you have to shoot them. Like, you have to... Right, unless you're, like, one of those, like chicken coddlers like you love your chickens you pet your chickens i don't do that with my chickens we need a there's a tour for that everything we keep talking about making that as a graphic that we can make because yeah. we say that like every day yeah basically every day but yeah when you when they're sleeping you snatch and grab and bag and kill them and that's the easiest easiest way Put that bunny poop in your garden. So, bunny poop is a really good fertilizer. Um, that's one of the things, like, it's not too hot, so it can really go, like, directly into the garden. <coughs> and it's not going to burn up your plants. Which is good, yeah. Yeah. Is against her to raise rabbits to sell to others. Yes, but what if one dies? That's my whole thing is it's right. not about the raising of the rabbits. It's about you're not allowed to touch a dead rabbit. Right. And if that person is buying the rabbit with the intention to raise rabbits to eat, you are enabling that person to basically sin. So... If you're good with that, right. you be good with that. We personally are not good with that. So, right. Like if we got, like, there's things over the years that like I have found in my food storage that I realized like I had baked beans. And after we became Toro, when I went through my beans, I figured out they had pork in them. Mm -hmm. And it was something I didn't think about immediately because we didn't eat pork much except for bacon, except for all of a sudden in my food storage, way deep in it was some baked beans and pork and I threw it away. Like I didn't donate it and some people are really good about like, oh, well, you have to donate right. that. But to me, 
that would be causing somebody else to sin. So for me, I that's what I felt like necessary. So it's kind of the same thing. So, but so isn't the like uncleanness aspect of the dead animal? Isn't that like a, a twenty-four hour? It is. It's like until sundown. Okay. So this isn't it's, like a you're a. It has nothing to do with salvation. Right. Period. None this of this. Like none like of Torah has anything. I mean, I'm kind turning of, my back yeah. on you because you touch a dead unclean animal maybe if you do it enough for us it can't be a part of the plan but yeah we don't we don't want it a part of the plan and you know there's technicalities like well what if you use a shovel you're not technically touching it but you're touching that gets into like do you the turn the a light switch on right do you not turn and a so light switch on we don't get into that stuff what you feel uh -huh. is right or wrong what do you feel and doing that? You don't do what we say you should do. You do what you feel convicted to do. Aluminum works for aliens. When will it be in the shop? What? Somebody wanted the big tumbler that T uses to be in the shop. We've talked about putting them in the shop, but they haven't gotten in there yet. Well, I mean, T's big Comes tumbler that, that he uses, if it's the one that Ray made, we're working on it. But he also right. has another one that's literally just a bear sticker stuck to like another tumbler. To yeah. like an Ozark Yeah, it's, pork and beans is one of those ones that we as preppers are, you know, bean people. Like, you're right. like, all the beans, all the beans. Um, and it works great in cans, and then you, yeah, all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is working out. You can find good vegetarian beans, too. No, we don't eat fossils. Read your, like, no. really, y'all. That's one of the things. This nope. should not have to be said, like, every time we live stream. Because I know there's, like, multiple of you. Like, I get, there's new ones, too. But. Yeah, we just, we don't really talk you to know, new ones. Like, but, yeah, we, we eat the big, the main things. Although, apparently, we did a class. If you guys are not on, if you're a woman and you're not on Women's Group Wednesday, we did a whole class on clean versus unclean. Yeah, you can find some great lists online. And there's a lot of grasshopper things we can eat. And I choose not to. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Y'all take care of that yeah. explanation. Leviticus like, 11, all that kind of stuff. We like, shouldn't have to talk about that anymore. Yeah. Canned bacon. Yeah, I had been looking before we were Torah, like, on, like, canned the canned bacon that you can get, the prepper canned bacon, like buying a whole case of it, which is ridiculously expensive, and I'm so glad I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. This is a tactical back porch. This is tactical. Same 30 questions on Tactical Tuesday. Right, Badger? It's the same thing. You have the ladies, y'all. Ask us some ladies questions. Well, I don't know. Last time we started talking about periods ladies. and everybody left. I know. It's important, though. <laughs> y'all, you need to prepare for your women. Okay, yeah. I can have a whole discussion on the fact. Yeah, man, Kelly used to have camping. You don't want that if it's not <coughs> prepared for, right? So prepare I mean, for you it. men. If you have not prepared, if you've got a wife or daughters, diva cubs, yes, Badger, thank you. Um, if you have not prepared for your women, and I'm talking about women in the fact of periods and pregnancy, um, uh menopause like there are some things that can help in all of these areas you can have all the bullets you want you don't want to have to shoot your wife you know because you forgot to prepare for her and she's like bleeding right. all over the couch well and then it really <laughs> will be like the biblical unclean right yeah there's this whole thing about biblically unclean about how a woman Where they the say you're supposed to wash it before and like, yeah the cups are amazing that's what it is if you don't be ready so be ready. Be ready, y'all. We're just going on cloth pads. Love cloth pads, but I prefer cups. So if you're of age, and I will explain this of age, but like, you know, there are women who can, if you can use a tampon, you can use a diva cup. Right. But before that, you should be using cloth pads. I prefer that. If you've cloth diapered your babies and cloth diapers, like if you're going to have babies, you're going to need some cloth diapers. I've used cloth diapers. I had one set of cloth diapers that were used on four different kids. So it actually can save you a lot of money, especially if you're having a lot of babies. Right. Um, but it's not a big deal. You throw it in the washer, you throw it in your bucket, 
and you clean it up just like you clean up everything else. So herbal right. treatments for cramps, yes, there are tons of them. Um, there's a lot of great books on there on herbs for young women, herbs for older women, hydrogen peroxide, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, good preps for, men for menopause would be um, blue cohosh, black cohosh. Check out all your cohoshes. Um, oils <laughs> of any kind, mm -hmm. those are really good. Um, um, cups the same as using a diaphragm. No, a diaphragm actually goes up against the cervix and a cup actually sits at the bottom right. of the vaginal canal. Like a cup. It's a cup, but it sits down at the bottom. It's not all the way up against right. the cervix. So it's a little bit different, but generally if you're a man, same comments, same, right. same idea. Um, but it's, there are a lot of different ones out there. And again, I would tell women to like figure them out before. What is a good first gun? A, just what I bought today is probably the best first gun. Well, I was going to say like. 20 gauge Mossberg. She's, she's just getting a 20 gauge. Um, my favorite like 22. run to gun is the 22 long rifle. Well, I had a 22 first, but that was a hand-me-down. Right. So then we got the 20 gauge shotgun is probably the next one. That, well, a shotgun is kind of like a point and click. Right. Like you don't have to, you need to be Amy, but not No, the pinata Amy. head is, it's <laughs> gone. It's gone. You got twisted. Yeah. It's gone. Um, yeah. 22 to start. My, yeah, we had a 22 first, but we got it as a hand-me-down from grandpa who was like born, it was bought at like Sears in 1950, 64 or something. Um, and then yeah. we each got our own handgun also and an AR, but first gun, AR or pistol. pistol. So I would probably, okay. So pistol, cause you can everyday carry men. What you need to realize <laughs> is yes, like, you don't want your woman to have that anxiety after she pulls that trigger. Because that's kind of, like, you get used to it, but it's still kind of there. You don't get over a 12 gauge. And so it's person. easier to, like, start lower and ease into that higher powered stuff. Yeah, 380. That's my first. Yeah, 22, and so, 12. like, because of that, I would probably go with a pistol over an AR. Um, well, like your very first pistol was the, it's the 380, the 380 and my, yours is the, yours is different than mine though. Right. Mine's a Walther 380 and yours no. is, wait, mine's they're a both Walther. the same. They're both Walther. I don't know. But they're different. They're same and they're different at the same time. Hers is, but yeah, a 22 <laughs> pistol, color. um, an AR, if that's like the only thing she's ever shot, it's either like, not she's a either going to absolutely <laughs> love it. Or it's going to scare the ever-living shit out of her. Yeah, I and know women who have shot a 12-gauge. The first thing they ever shot was a 12-gauge, and they literally will never shoot another gun again. Yeah. And they have these stories of, like, I was because knocked the recoil, on my ass. Or the recoil and the noise. Yeah, and, and it scared the crap out of them, and they just wouldn't ever shoot again. Yeah. So, oh, she said, I think Lovey said she went from a 380 to a 45. Right, so it's a lot yeah. easier to, like, make those stair steps up because we get used to like the not so bad pew pews before you bust out the big gun pew pews and yeah and start them with a good knife you Shalom, know like Danny Jackson I always I, think you're my old boss forever and <laughs> Danny, always I was he actually always Danny Jackson his name was Danny Jackson oh my gosh that's so cool and, and it's not uh, it's not it's not the old boss unless you're using an opposite if axis. you have a 380 you might as well use a nine never shot a nine, so I don't know. With a cell phone, I don't know what happens when you type at in the name. So if you use a cell phone when you type at, it doesn't, it doesn't usually work. It's on a computer. If you type right. at, it'll actually tag the person. So some people on a cell phone still type the at because at least the it person knows you're trying to talk to them. Um, but yeah, nine millimeter is super snappy. Yeah, I've never, never done that yet. So I need to do like some videos on 20 gauge, zero to 100. Um, some videos on me learning to shoot because I think it would be fun, especially for uh, mm -hmm. the people who also have never shot and that's not been, you know, people who do fighting stance. Um, to ever cultivate your own mushrooms as a source of food. You guys aren't big mushroom people, so probably mm -hmm. not. We like mushrooms. I have indigos on property. I know that. 
I'm okay with brought up in our driveway every year and you can cook with those and it makes like a legit like green eggs and ham I mean we don't eat ham but like it turns your food uh, bluish and that's kind of cool yeah so a lot of people um, a lot of people like them I have yet to cook with them I've collected some and then I ended up like being a oh little that's a good question afraid. What is your biggest pet peeve as a female prepper? Ooh. Men thinking they're cooler and can do more shit than we can do. <laughs> yeah. They're like more important. Like I think I mean, men it's are kind of like okay. it's the bullet guys, like the total tactical, like right. forget the food storage, don't even have a bag of rice. Right. So it's not like I like to compare it to a woman being a contractor because yes. I was. And so the contractor world is very much so the man world. Mm -hmm. Like you, you rarely meet a woman contractor that like legitimately knows what she's doing other than just like designing shit. And we met one like this weekend who can like stand on a roof and yeah, take the guys to task. Right. And so I would compare it to that, that a lot of men uh, think that they're like the bee's knees at prepping and they are like they have their purpose and right uh, but we balance right but we it's very much so a balance because they don't think they don't think about the nitpicky they don't think about like the cups the spoons the knives the toilet paper the like how do you can it how do you cook it oh the spices right oh yeah you're not gonna want to eat that same chicken in 75 different ways somebody needs to remember to buy the right. chili the diva seasoning cup, the, the diva kids cups. clothes the oh yeah because <clears throat> kids clothes like you've got to have bought the kids clothes because they can't wear or the have a thing. source of hand-me-downs but or socks underwear right undershirts those men love their undershirts my husband today to buy more undershirts because men love right. their undershirts they need to have some packs of undershirts you know like so like we put that stuff away that they don't think about right. the like man prepping world would be lost without its women they just don't like to admit that yeah yeah the next size up on everything mm -hmm. all of that so yeah my biggest thing would be the guys who like think they know it all because they can shoot every rifle they can do every gun class they can do everything but they've yeah they couldn't make bread to save their lives and it's like even if they have you know 3,465, you know, uh, buckets of wheat, mm -hmm. they don't have yeast or they don't have, you know, baking soda or right. a grinder, you know, that's, it's like, yeah. well, what are you going to do with that wheat? Cause you're probably, or sew a button. Yeah. What happens when all their buttons fall off in the shit hits the fan scenario? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody better be able to sew the buttons on and darn the socks. And, but guy, I mean, guys for the most part are good in their lane. And women are good in their lane. Like, I wouldn't know what, how many rounds of what ammo. Oh, when we they start need talking, to... like, how many weight of this and. Th right. I don't, know I don't that. like, I glaze over and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about as long as it shoots. Right. And you hand it to me and fill my. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I'm good. You got to give credit to each in their own lane. Yeah. I mean, there are women who are great at those things also, but. Um, Right. What was that? My wife is great at. He got his wife into prepping. Now she's running circles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And women are often better with like some animals and things. Um, women's group Wednesday. It's on Patreon. So if you join Patreon, you can get the information. It's just a dollar a month to be able to join it. We try to keep it. It's a Zoom. So we want it to be kind of private. We don't want every, um, <laughs> hear that mad count. Um, we don't want every YouTube person to possibly jump on because it's definitely a small group of women who talk about what we talk about on women's group one day is basically how to be a tour observant woman, even if it means that you're just, um, checking it out. Like right. you don't have to be a tour observant woman to join women's group Wednesday. You need to be like interested in or wanting to know more or kind of checking it out. If you want to know about fall feasts, we talk about the feasts a lot. And we often talk about, um, 
the practical side of that and we do a lot of praying for each other. So it's, it's very much, it's probably like 50-50 on the like prayer requests um, and basically praying for each other and having a lot of fellowship as right. well as actually um, talking Torah and doing all that stuff. Yes, you can definitely join. Just join right. Patreon and the post goes out every Wednesday. Um, it gets posted. We post, because women, um, we post one in the morning that's a reminder that's got all the information on it. And then we post one probably an hour before also that reminds you that it's happening. Because right. to me, women need to like plan, set an alarm, and then also be reminded kind of at the last minute um, And look, like you can find... It's at Patreon, like Bear Independent. Patreon.com slash Bear Independent. I think it's in the description. like, Or this. it's in the description. Or any bear video that's not a live stream that he does his little thumbnails in. Like, it's a little bear. It's a little baby bear. <laughs> I know she was like, are y'all doing bad? I wish they did child badgers? care during TCCC training as a stay-at-home mom. I would love to go. Um... It could probably be arranged. So send an email to NTX Mag and depending tell Monica, on the depending on the location. And, and yeah, if it's something local. As long as you don't can... mind back porch bitches watching your kid. <laughs> back porch bad words. Back porch bad words. That's probably who it would be. <laughs> or one of our, we have older daughters too. That yeah, we do have older kids. We have older daughters. So yeah, I mean, it's probably a specialty thing. It's probably not something we're going to offer all the time because I think we had three women this weekend yeah there were more of like us well four i kind of considered ashley one of us but right but she was there attending were, the class. she was oh. attending the class technically all the chickens and lasagna and ladies thank you thank yes, you Kat, have her join us on women's group wednesday um somebody else said something that christians new testament can get along with tour observant women yeah absolutely I, we were New Testament Christians before we became full Bible believing, Torah observant women. We don't judge. You could offer a ladies only. Woo, that could be cool. Um, that could be cool. Because, like, I've wondered, like, how do chest seals work with boobies? That's a great question. That's a really great question. Where are the men? They haven't showed back up yet. No. You know, because they're not like flat lumps. I mean, sometimes, sometimes they are. Sometimes they are, but not always. <laughs> but yeah, like, and how like, does a chest seal work? Sizes. They're flexible, but like, what if it's. You still kind of have like. It's kind of mushy. Hey, really great question that we don't know the answer to, and your wife came up with this, not the people on there. But how do chest seals work with boobs? How would a full size chest, like. With boobs? Right. Isn't it? They kind Can of you mushy, still like, get a good seal? seal? Well, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> um, All lumps matter. <laughs> must have cancerous. Well, got that shit some people out. have said the idea that we should have a stop the bleed T triple C class for women and provide childcare. Which would be cool if we could just lo local one. Now, listen, that sounds like a great idea, but it sounds like those people need to be in charge of that idea. Right, so I mean, to, do you want me to answer the question? Yeah, answer. I gotta, hang on, I, I gotta walk in front of you because I gotta pee and reach out. Chest seals conform to the medium that they are applied to, aka your chest. The what idea if it's on the edge? <laughs> Bring me a chest seal. Hey, open up. Hold up. Gosh dang, this is not, it's not my show tonight. What are we doing? <laughs> No, you go pee. <laughs> go ahead. Go pee. I got this. <laughs> Just go pee. Whose lumps are we using? This is a Gen 1. Way back in the day. Back in the day. This was my personal kit. So these are compact chest seals. So I'll just go ahead and open one because we got 97,000 more of these. So the way this works, okay? I've never seen a chest seal. Here's a chest seal. You open it up like this, okay? It has, inside of here, there's a small piece of gauze. I gotta tilt this down. Shalom, Miss Lovely Dudley. There's a small piece of gauze inside of here. 
this gauze is to prep the area wherever you are hit, okay? So, to help uh, clean it off a little bit. In the bare fact and the bare minimum, we provide additional gauze. J. John, shalom, brother. Bare boob is going to take a lot more than 70 bucks in Super Chat. Um, but uh, Danny Jackson, bless you. So, you get this little piece of gauze. It's like a three by three. is attached to the seal. That's what it's there for. Okay, so you pop this off, prep the area, try and clean as much of the blood off of there as you can. Blood, sweat, tears, grime, whatever. That's why the bare fact and the bare minimum come with additional uh, five by nines in them if in the, in the stack, right? Because this is a three by three, we send five by nines, two of them. Okay, then this is your chest seal. See how it's vented? See those vents right there? This is the hyphen, this is the compact hyphen chest seal. These things are the stickiest sticky that ever sticky. My chest looks like this. So we're not going to stick that to this because I don't need a six inch square of deferred chest. However, this right here, this hole, you center that over the gunshot wound or the area wherever you've been punctured. Now, if something is embedded, like there's a piece of rebar stuck in your chest or there's a knife in there or whatever, we don't remove the embedded object, okay? You leave what's in there in as long as the person can still, <laughs> oh God, bear cleavage. As long as the person can still breathe and function, whatever is embedded, we leave in place, okay? And in which case we would, you can cut this and stick this around this, but most of the time what happens is the blood that comes out of the embedded area acts as a seal, it coagulates and acts as a seal. In which case, surgical tape, duct tape, that all helps. If there's just a hole, like from a bullet, if there's just a hole, <clears throat> like from a bullet, this circle right here is centered over the wound. Whether it's here, or here, or here, or here, or here, whatever, okay? Um, I would strongly encourage all of you to Google sucking chest wound, or this is one of the things we go over in our Stop the Bleed in our TCCC classes. What does a sucking chest wound actually sound like? There's nothing else that sounds like a sucking chest wound. When you hear that, you need to go ahead and apply one of these. But in reality, if there is a wound that is inside of the junctional areas between the clavicle line right here and your belly button, you need to apply a chest seal to it. You're not doing any harm by applying a chest seal. You need to go ahead and apply a chest seal. You may, after 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, need to burp this chest seal. There's an issue that happens where some back pressure is created. By the way, none of this is medical advice, but back pressure is created where um, now the lung is having a hard time expanding because of the back pressure, in which case you grab this tab and just burp it and you can most of the time hear an audible, then you close it back up again. And the person, the patient, the casualty will tell you, I'm having a hard time breathing again, and they'll start freaking out again, in which case, okay, yep, go ahead and burp that, okay? But here's the deal. This thing, see this? It will conform to anything. Your itty bitty titty committee, your double Ds, whatever you got, don't care. <clears throat> this, this will work, okay? And also, frankly, this, uh, yeah, duct tape and Ziploc bags will work. The cool thing about these is that they're vented and they're super sticky. Super sticky. They're like, right. see how, see how tacky it is? They're super sticky. They're designed to do one thing and that's cover bullet holes inside of the torso. Um, so they will conform, man. So even if you have like a super hairy chest, like, would they need to be free No, or, well, no, no, no. No, if, if you have, if, if you look like me, like Sasquatch's older brother, when you take your shirt off, this will stick to it. They literally, uh, Hyphen has video of them putting these things on uh, air tanks 
with holes in them and then taking them underwater to see how much pressure they will hold. They're super sticky. Okay. That's why we use these in our kits. There's lots of other good ones, the Rush chest seals, and um, it, there's lots of other good chest seals, but these are what we use. And FYI, the chest seals that come in the trainer kits, the TCCC trainer kits, are the exact same chest seals as the full-size high-fin chest seal. These, by the way, are the compacts. So, which will, be in the... which will be in the Cub kit, which we're not going to tease anymore until we get it in the damn store. <laughs> so, training classes in the store. We talked about how to yeah. put a chest seal on a boob. You, the way you put a chest seal on a boob is you take your shears, you cut the shirt off, you go, hey, it's a boob with a hole in it. Put the flop chest seal over the over yeah, flop that, move the breastage wherever it needs to go, apply the chest seal, good to go, okay? So, and by the way, I'm scared of the boobs. Um, Don't take advantage while she's shirtless. If you are taking advantage of the boobs while applying chest seals, you probably not. I don't want you rescuing me. Right. Yes. yes. Chris, just remember this very simple phrase from uh, Foe. Chest seal, not chest feel. Okay? It doesn't matter whether the turkeys are done or not. You just apply the chest seal, move along. Right. Okay? Holes are not the time to bake yeah, there's, there's not, you so don't put the lasagna in the oven when people are bleeding. Vented. Yeah, that, that's the rush chest seal. And that's the thing with these, they're vented, and so on the exhalation, they will disperse a little bit of that back pressure, and then on the inhalation, they suck tight again and close it up. Who said to what now? Can you do both? Can you do now? <laughs> if you're dealing with somebody who's been shot in the torso, they probably are not interested in lasagna. Somebody actually said that there's a tour for that. There is a tour. There literally is a tour. There's no lasagna when bleeding is occurring. <laughs> okay, there is. That is straight up tour. That is straight up what the Torah says. Um, so with that, uh, gosh, it was great to see you guys. Yes, you can buy. Yeah, get the. I'm off tonight. Make it go yes, away. Yes, you can buy the full size. I haven't added the compacts yet because we haven't needed an inventory of them yet. But with it's the coming. new it's kit coming, coming out, it will be available soon. So yeah. <laughs> If you That's, take advantage, you're a dirtbag actual. Right. Actual. Dirt bag actual. Thou shall not feel it patient, even if they're a stripper. Right. Exactly, Badger. Does yeah. not matter her day job. You fix the sucking right. chest wound. Deal with the bleeding boobs. Right. <laughs> Parakeet of salt. We are having an awesome, awesome night. Parakeet of salt, man. Hey, I'm just saying. You got to bend. Don't be stingy with them caveman kernels when the next batch is up. <laughs> saying well you lost some yeah and then that torrential downpour no i'm talking about when, no, you, when threw you threw them. them and they like <laughs> sprayed out all he over tried to the throw them. that was the edamame <clears throat> oh the edamame he tried to throw them at somebody to eat them at, and they they somehow, are i think he didn't have it yeah sealed, sealed all the way. completely and they opened up and just spilled all over the back porch yeah, yeah that was my bad it was my bad. yeah there's a tour for that History about bouncers breaking up stripper fights. We are, no, that's not what we're talking about. I've done that several times. <laughs> what, no rapid head to toe assessment? <laughs> no. Yeah, they were all over the back porch, like we were covered in edamame. <laughs> they're stuck in between my deck boards. Like, yeah, they're, they're everywhere. everywhere. They were everywhere. It was very sad for the moment. It was only like half the bag so but they were the it rest was a were pretty well full loved. bag we ate the hell out of that box of parakeet salt yeah. stuff though awesome stuff. i don't want to even know what edamame there is no code for edamame it's only right. tacos lasagna and eggplant half the group figured out when we said it was taco tuesday what we were talking about <laughs> Talk about me, I haven't had dinner. <laughs> None of y'all have had dinner over here. I ate taco much thing. And mama, I didn't know you eat soy, never heard of it mentioned before. Yeah, we're not a I mean, as a group, we're not big soy, like we're right. not a tofu not kind like, of a group, but some good salted with some on, spice bro. edamame is amazing. Right. I love edamame. When we eat sushi, I always order 
um, wife edamame. wants to know what tacos is. <laughs> so ask her if tacos you should eat the taco and then she'll know. Are like two <laughs> outer shells <laughs> with rated R <laughs> some yeah, PG filling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Goodness. R-rated back porch, cheek full of kernels while sealing a boob. Within Question the part. shells. <laughs> that would be pertinent Somebody to said, two ask women your father. <laughs> sitting on a porch together. We just say there's taco. There's taco. There's tacos. There's eggplant, and together they make lasagna. <laughs> I need that cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley uh, just put like tacos all the way across the screen. Yeah. There's a lasagna door hanging. Eggplant goes in the taco. Right. Correct. Yes. Soft shell. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. You know, we thought crunchy. we would have lost everybody on the like Diva Cup thing, but we got we them all we back. We had 411. We only had like 300. <laughs> we got them all back on the tacos. <laughs> Could you. Please start with the biblical principles of Torah more to do with the study. I understand your ways. I love the Lord, but I don't understand Torah. So Torah, y'all, okay. Torah is not that crazy. When we say Torah, it usually means like, do you guys, have you ever heard of like following the Ten Commandments? Okay. Go read the Ten Commandments and figure out which ones you don't follow. You probably should be following them or you think you're following them. That's all Torah is. It's a little bit more than that because we follow more of the commandments because if you really study, you will learn that they did not bring down just on the stones that were brought down from the mount was not just 10 statements. There was more. Right. It's there was more. There are a lot of the commandments Old in there. Testament. So and some of them, some like, people you just can't call it, do because you don't have well, it's a the temple. Yeah, like, it's, <coughs> we it's don't have the priestly laws. The um, so you can't do them all. But if you look at the idea of, do you believe in the Old Testament? Do you actually follow the things in the Old Testament? That's all we do. Right. It's not that we believe in a different book. It's not that we believe in right. anything different. We just actually take the Old Testament and the parts that are still applicable today, meaning right. it doesn't involve the temple and it doesn't involve a priest, we still do them. Now, are there some laws in the state that don't allow us to, you know, stone people at the gate? Right. Yes, but we kind of, if somebody in our camp did one of those things, we would put them outside the gate. Right. We may not be able to stone them outside the gate, but they better run. Right. <laughs> so the Torah technically is the first five books, but it's kind of the whole Old Testament when we say Torah observant. Is there a Torah for tattoos? Yes, and it depends whether you believe in the comma or not. <laughs> yeah. Basically, punctuation. punctuation is important. Wait, wait, wait. You don't just pick and choose like the modern church? Exactly. <clears throat> and it's like, you know, okay, and that's example, if you're a modern Christian, do you celebrate Halloween? Do you celebrate Christmas? Find it in the Bible for me. Do you celebrate Easter? Do you celebrate Easter? Find it in the Bible for me because it ain't there. But right. do you celebrate Passover? Do you celebrate Sukkot? Do you celebrate um, the Feast of Trumpets? They're Tabernacle, in there. Or, Tabernacle, yeah. well, Sukkot, Sukkot, like all yeah. those things. Do, those are the ones we're supposed to do. We don't do the other ones. Do the feasts. And I'm telling you, once you start to... You don't do Halloween just for fun. You really don't want to get me started on Halloween. I haven't done Halloween in 20 years. Um, not since I walked into a pentagram. Okay. Um, literary story, testimony behind that. But yeah, no, we have not. We do not do Halloween. We do not do, hey, what is he? What does he call it? Pagan winter holiday. We don't do Christmas. Now, if you have done them up to now, okay don't beat yourself up for on it you know right. now now you do better people are like well, how do you what do you tell your kids you tell them i didn't okay. know and now i know better right and rock tumbler so like sukkot 
We do presents. We generally do presents during Sukkot because more than likely that was around the time that Jesus, Yeshua was actually born. And so the three wise men do present gifts to baby Jesus. So give um, your kids some free presents. And right. And so, yeah, like we, we have like it's a the new year. Five. Well, it's the new year in a way of it's like the, it's like the business new year. Right. Like if you think about what is a, um, <coughs> what is the word for it? Financial new year. That's actually what Rosh Hashanah is is the financial new year it's not the actual new year new year because it's actually the seventh month which can't be the new year because it's month seven right well starter kit medical application for alcohol drink it and it feels better read the book <laughs> pagan christianity open my eyes yeah there are lots of really great books out, out there on it and again like what we do fiscal new year that's yeah. the word i was looking for um it's not a judgment of what you've done in the past. Yah opens your eyes when your eyes are supposed to be opened. Don't beat yourself up about anything before. Do it now. Right. And it doesn't mean, and this is controversial, which I'm always controversial a little bit. It doesn't mean excluding your family and telling them they're horrid and, you know, going to hell because they still do Christmas. It's okay. Like, you don't do it in your family. And it doesn't mean you can't go visit grandma. Right. At Christmas time and hang out with her, but you're not going to put a tree up in your house. What's up, guys? Exactly. It's, it's not, you know and what I mean? The, if the house that you go to has a tree. Yes, Mad Kelt. It's just like, you're not. It's their thing. You're not idolizing. You're not worshiping. You're not. You're not in sin because you walked into a store that had a tree in it. Right. <laughs> but. <coughs> Like, just because you're <coughs> in the room with a tree doesn't mean that, like, <laughs> internal damnation. <laughs> it just and means, again, like, it's not about salvation. Right. Belief and works are about salvation. Right. The rest of it, or your conviction of the Spirit is to his timing. A hundred percent. The conviction of the Spirit is his timing. But if he's leading you... Then follow, then go look, go read it for yourself. Anything in Leviticus, Leviticus 11, Leviticus 23, go hang out, read it, and tell me you don't get it. If you still don't get it, come back and tell us. Is yeah. male circumcision required? It depends. Not for Gentiles, Acts 15, verse 15 through 19. Acts 15, verse 15 through 19 is not a requirement of Gentiles. There are people who still do it, but I will tell you if you're going to do it, you better do it biblically and not at a hospital. Get rid of Santa Claus, period. You should never have had Santa. It's lying to your children, and he's also like a pedophile. Right? Right? Congregate. He's not handing attention to me, right? People Santa is like a pedophile. Like Santa is my wife. Yeah. He's a, it's a guy who you're supposed to burn your children to, so... Right. Do, I need, do I need to come over for one hot minute? No. Okay. No, right. we got this. Hey, you know I'm confused on the beards and the hair. Well, that's probably you because I don't Round do the beard. Not the corners of your beards. Round, not the corners of your beard. So that means your your beard should look like this. Yeah. I you should look like your beard Pastor Joe. Like okay. The <laughs> Molek. Molek bad. Right. Old fat dude that comes once a year. Bad. If you guys, if you ever wanted to know about Molech, Google Molech. It's the most horrific thing you've ever seen. Right. Thank you for the Torah and the Bible. I was really wondering about and that. And some things, like, some things in the Bible. Santa is the story like, of St. Nicholas. It's actually pretty cool. Mm, yeah, they added that in. So. It, it made it fit their agenda? Yeah. Well, just like um, Christmas fit their agenda. And Easter right. fits the agenda. Go way back. So you got to go back before that. There's a lot of things that were biblical holidays, true biblical holidays, and then they wanted the pagans to be a part of it. So they're like, hey, if we smash them together and mush it all up, then somehow everybody will be able to do it and it'll be okay. And we'll Yah says, everyone. no, it's not okay. We'll make everybody happy. Not the new age BS, but the actual right. story. Yeah. Which if you think about it, like it's kind of like, bring back Today. the battle goats 
kind of like today, where people try to like twist everything to right. be based on to their to appease the masses instead of sticking to it's what the same is thing happening today. True. Yeah, I mean, talk about morals. Where do people? Where? Okay, this was a good question we had the other night about like where do people get their morals if not from the Bible? Yeah. Where's the line? Right. How do they have morals? Right. If they don't, if they're they true atheists. Because they pick and like, because even within the commandments, there's stuff that people break. And so it's, yeah. Just, where, just think about Sabbath. Right. Where just do Sabbath you itself. draw your line in the sand to say, this is okay, but this isn't. And is that really... Um, I just said Sunday Christian. Sunday Christian. Being even, a believer. Yeah. Even if you're if you're a Sunday Christian and you absolutely believe that you are doing your best and you have a heart for God, Jesus, Yeshua, whatever you want to call it. And I was one of those people. Like, so I'm not, this is not from a place of judgment. This is a place of, I was a Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday Christian. We lived right behind our church. We were involved in every single thing. When the doors were open, we were there. We were serving. We were a part of missions. Our kids went on mission trips. Like we were everything, but we thought Sunday was Sabbath. And right. yes, okay, say Sunday is Sabbath. I don't believe it is now, but say it is. Are you really never working on the Sabbath? Are you not buying? Do you do you not right. buy you things? Hold it as a do you hold the entire twenty four hours? Right, the entire twenty four hours. And right. if you do, then like, I can. Like, I can somewhat get girl, behind that. Girl. Right. But um, if you're but, not, if you're going out to Sunday lunch. Yeah, if you have a brunch. church, then. We need, to, we need to have a talk. Right. Um, we went away this weekend for training. Yep. We brought a bunch of food with us because we knew from Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown, we couldn't buy any food. So if we wanted to eat, it needed to be with us already. And we were in a hotel, so... We had coolers, we had ice, we had refrigerators, we had things. We were on our way there ordering food because we needed it to arrive before sundown. <laughs> yeah. And it like, we that take great. it, yeah. it wasn't good anyway. But we we do our best to Adhere. align yeah. our everyday stuff right. with what we say we believe. Right. And How sometimes does someone there's... listen for God? What is it like when he speaks and like God that. speaks? Oh. Okay. So somebody asked coincidence. Oh, no, Just look for the coincidence. That's the start. Right. I don't even know how to say your name. Something Fravis one. This is a how great How does somebody question. listen for God? What is it like when God speaks? So this is completely different depending on who you are. Yes, but it, coincidence to me is the easy one. Yeah. Look okay. for the So mine is like the little voice. Like, you go and... People call it your inner voice. Your right. You, like, start your car or something. And you just have, like, that kind of, like, shoot-off thought of... I need to watch out. Or... Five versus one. Okay. Um, you know, something important is going to happen today. Or don't go there. You need to go here Or call instead. grandma. Or call grandma. Yeah, like... <laughs> To me, it's just kind of that, like, offshoot thought. Like, it just kind of pops in and it pops out. And um, so that's what God's voice is to me. A lot of people see, like, images. Like, they'll get, like, a flash or... Um, I do when I'm in extreme spiritual warfare. Right. I see things. Like, they'll see things. I wear shirts. Yeah. Um, but it really just depends on who you are. And some of it is just simply like paying attention. Like Renee said, Coincident. coincidences. Like, like you find yourself saying you like, I people, just said like, that. Wait, hang on. You, you had to do this in order for this to happen. And then this happened. And like somehow these 30 things came together so that this one thing happened. Yasidence or Godsidence right. is what I call it because it's not. It, it's him working out your life. Yeah. You know? Um, so those are to me is the like when you're not really ready to like pray and like listen, you can kind of look and see where he's working in your life. If right. anybody's, you know, ever taken like some Bible studies, um, 
the idea of just basically looking around you and trying to figure out where he's working in your life right. and what's going on, um, that is a really cool way to kind of look but not feel like you're talking and he's answering. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, you get to the point of you start paying attention to people would call it the Holy right. Spirit. People would talk about Some people call it your instinct. Um, there's a lot of different words for it. To me, if you really start paying attention and write them down. Get yourself like a notebook and some people call it like a prayer journal and write your answers in there. But just write down those coincidences, write down those answers to prayer or write down the, the prayer little requests. things that pop in your head. Like just something that you can go back and reference because all too often it's like a week later. Yeah. Or a month later that like we it end up, up like connecting the dots to something and it's like, oh, wow. Like, this is way bigger than we are. And I, I like to take a composition notebook, you know, the kind you can't rip the pages out, the black and white marble yeah. cover, and fold it in half and put prayers down one side and then answers down the other. And you're not going to get an answer for every single one, but if you start writing down your prayers on the left side, you'll be able to go back and read and realize how many were answered. It's crazy how many there were. You find fallacies in all religions. Interesting. Have you read The Case for Christ? Because that was a really big one for me back in the day. Thank you, Sophia. I work at a job that I have to work on the Sabbath, so I try to treat the following days the Sabbath. No work, no shopping. Okay, you're still honoring the Sabbath, one. And then if you still feel convicted that you shouldn't be working on the Sabbath, then pray about that. And then if you actually look biblically, there are people who are allowed to work on the Sabbath. People who are like saving lives, uh, you know, doctors, EMT, police officers, saving lives, the people who were um, the, you know, somebody saw to watch the gate right. on the Sabbath. So it's not a nobody could work on the Sabbath, but the majority of people were not meant to work on the Sabbath. What? Religion is man-made. I don't believe that at all. So <laughs> I would say start watching your life and paying attention because I personally do not believe that they're... And that's because I have had encounters with Yah repeatedly. Like, and now to the point that it's almost daily. How do you deal with toxic family members? Boundaries. Have you read the book? Boundaries. You cut them <laughs> loose. But it depends on how toxic. A little toxic, uh, yeah, I mean, you build some boundaries. Right. A little more, they cross the boundaries. They get a bigger boundary. The third time to me, you're out. If it's super dramatic, you're out. Right. Like, organized religion is different than spirituality. A hundred percent. Like, I'm not yeah. talking about a church with a denomination name. Mm -hmm. That's not who I believe in and what fuels right. me. This is me and my Yah and my Bible. And I happen to have found people who also have them and their Yah and their right. Bible and things line up, but we don't like we balance each other, we check in with each other, we challenge each other, but we don't have like this doctrine of us. No. It's like where does it say that? And and y'all, you have to so you have to surround yourself with good people. Good people. Okay? So if you are not in a good life position, meaning exactly rain that you you're a bitcher, you're a complainer, you're a pessimist, you're like the oh woe is me victim mentality, victim mentality. You are gonna have shitty people around you. That is what that attitude is going to attract. And you are gonna have your life constantly in chaos and you're never gonna have peace. And that's how that works. If you can get yourself squared away to where you can see the good things even when crap happens, you have your faith in Yah. You have good friends around you that build you up instead of being like, 
oh yeah, girl, he's a piece of shit. Blah, 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 blah. And, <coughs> like, that's the difference. It's accountability. Yes. It's true. Like, like, if you're living a life and you've figured out kind of your boundaries, even if you're still figuring them out, like, you've got a few that you're like, okay, this is how I want to live my life and why I want to live my life. Still a work in progress. Yeah. But you find other people who are like, okay, you said you were going to do this and you said you were going to do that. So we've had times more than once where we've literally been like, I, we were at, a, at an event and I literally was like, oh my gosh, we need, I think it was like tape or post-it notes or something. And I walked out the door to go to Dollar General and I hit the door and he's like, where are you going? And I'm like, Dollar General? And he's like, it's the Sabbath. And I was like, like everybody needs a little reminder sometimes where somebody else says, wait, you profess this. I'm going to remind you of it. We all need that. So I asked if we pray over every meal. No, no I don't. <laughs> we pray a lot, yeah. but it's not like a ritualistic thing. No, and I, it's not about checking the boxes. No, and I give, I give thanks to you throughout the day because I notice those little, those little tidbits that he's putting things in place. And so constantly throughout the day I'm giving thanks to him and generally at dinner more so than any other meal when we're sitting down as a family we pray right um, if it's like a corporate thing we tend to pray but like I'm not one who if I'm if I roll through the drive through and grab some fries I'm not generally like stopping and being ritualistic about praying it Yes, law enforcement, totally different. Right. Um, I mean, that's a rotating shift thing, obviously. If you have a choice, you know, some people have a choice to be able to work when they work, then I right. would say do your best, if that's what your conviction is, to not work on the Sabbath. But in most of those fields, doctor, EMT, nurse, um, law enforcement, yeah. you don't have a choice. And so that's exactly why, because you're necessary. Mm -hmm. We consider Saturday the Sabbath. Yeah, Friday night at sundown to Saturday yeah. night and sundown is our Sabbath. Jobs that would, would usually fall to the Levites. Yes. If somebody would die if you don't do your job. Okay. How do you find friends if you don't leave your own? You're on the internet. Right. So T remind us so, it's the Levites. That's the fancy yeah. word for what I was trying to say. If there's a group of people that aren't that are okay to not do the Sabbath. Basically, if you can save lives and you don't have a choice to work, you work. Mm -hmm. So always in Texas. Uh, how do you find friends if you don't leave your home? Um, you got to get out of that comfort zone. So oh, you kind of have to make yourself vulnerable. Um, so y'all... You may not realize this, but like me and Renee had talked once on the phone for like what, 30 minutes? Maybe. Maybe. Like pushing it if we put a timer on. Right. And it was kind of awkward. Like we totally were, awkward. Like we had never talked before. <laughs> we were talking about like business stuff. <coughs> and, and it was like, literally I was like, hey, I'm like moving there in a couple weeks. Right. Like, <laughs> like T and Renee had a relationship and there was something that I needed her for so I had to like butt into that relationship and then she got here and, we were and like, I was like best friend <laughs> <laughs> like we were literally like where have you been all my life right. like <laughs> so and like because I'm like a totally awkward person like I don't I don't do strangers Usually, I can do the small talk and schmoozy thing, but only because I grew up with a mom who was like in politics. So I can do it, but it's totally fake me, and I literally have a different voice when I do it. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Like they hear me in the office. I get on the phone, not with our people, but I get on phone with like a hotel or something, and I'm like, "Hi, this is Renee with Bear Independent." Right. You know, and like I sound like a thirteen year old. Like, hi. <laughs> Introverts yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, we. You know what is so funny? We are both what people would call introverts but together we're like extreme extroverts and that's guys <laughs> that's because we boost each other up like how come you wear jeans and t-shirts but the bible says women shouldn't dress like a man so like back when the, bible, the bible was written men dressed like women 
So we dress modestly, and our right. husbands approve of the fact that we dress modestly, and yeah. yet we still feel like we dress like women, like we're not wearing men's clothing. Um, I do wear long skirts um, and dresses. Oh, potato, really? Um, I wear long skirts and dresses probably about 50% of the time. Um, I saw somebody ask about head covering. Um, I head cover about 50% of the time. And I am <coughs> head covering. She is covered right now. Right now. So um, it's what do you feel? It's a lot about your household and what your head, and we even refer to our husbands often as our head. We may not on here, um, but our husbands are the heads of our household and they 100% are in charge, even if we're sassy from time to time. But when things are, yes, we're super awkward. When things are serious, when it is um, important, we are very submissive. When that's like a super decision, like a decision that affects all. All of our husbands would agree with this. Yeah. So yeah. when it's really important, we are what, submissive. Wives. What do you men think? No, sit, sit down. You can Somebody just talk said, Why don't we wear without shirts? looking. Why don't we wear shirts and dresses all the time? Here's the deal. There are certain portions of my household that uh, my wife has full purview over. So when it's within her purview, I trust her 100% to do her job, which are the things that have been entrusted to her to do by the father and by me to use her giftings, talents, and delights to get done. I don't need, just like how I manage everybody else, hey, here's what I need to happen, make it happen. I don't care how you make it happen, just make it happen, right? I don't need to be involved in that. When there's things that fall on the edge of her purview and my purview, there's discussion where she says, hey, what do you think about this? And I said, I don't know, what do you think about that? And we have some back and forth. And then we decide which one of us is going to act on that, her or I, because it's on the edge of both of our purviews. Parenting, for example, right? I set the tone, I handle the discipline, but really my wife runs the day to day. Uh, same thing with the household. I set the tone, I handle the discipline, but my wife runs the day to day. And then there's things that are very clearly my purview, protection, provision, and blessing. And she may come to me and say, hey, I have a suggestion, I have a question, I have a concern, but within my purview, my headship, leadership, and stewardship does not mean that I'm white knife handing my wife and saying, listen, woman, you're going to do this or blah, blah, blah. It's not that at all. It's understanding that I am incomplete without her. She is my rib. She was made out of me. She is the missing piece of me that I was incomplete without. And she belongs to the father. He fearfully and wonderfully made her. He didn't make her for my provision and blessing. He made her for his will, to do his will. He didn't and make her for you to take advantage of. Yeah, he didn't make you for me to take advantage of or to exercise my will on. He made her so that I might be blessed in the knowing of her. And it is my job, my duty, my responsibility to bring my headship, my stewardship, my leadership to this house and to steward the gifting that is my wife that belongs to the father. Okay, so I'm... If I ever turn into a raging asshole, which is possible, believe it or not, it happens. It's been known to happen. My wife has the bandwidth, has the authority, has the permission to say, hey, you need to take it down a notch. Roger that. My brothers, by the way, if I'm turning into a raging asshole, certainly have the authority to say, hey, I need to talk to you. Yeah, they are commanded to say, yo, you're out of line. Let's talk to you. And so this whole submission thing is understanding that at the end of an age, I will stand in judgment for how well I led my household. My wife will not. And so the eternal implications of my headship, stewardship, and leadership far greatly exceed hers. However, comma, but I am... I am lacking without her. She is my rib. I am incomplete without her. And my job, literally, biblically, is to take care of her and we are to dominate this battle space together, to rule and subdue together. She is my co-warrior. 
She doesn't work for me. She works with me. So that's the idea of submission. That's how we do things here. And I know that most people that you might have had three or four, maybe ten aneurysms during that last three minutes, but that's how we do it. <coughs> there you go, baby. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're I don't know what they said. Just Bo, do you have anything to add to that? What could I add? To that? <laughs> it's like, what could I add to that? Um, what? I'm sorry, you do However, have something to add. Oh, yeah, However, yeah. he's like, Huggy Bear had it right. Huggy what was that? Comment, Huggy Bear made a comment. Oh, you saying, totally missed it because you didn't. Your wife is not behind you; she's next to you. She's next right. to you. So yeah, if you want to do a a great a great word search is understanding what the word help me is the word help me literally means to face each other and to have strength so you can imagine if two people are standing they can't be pushed over when they lean into each other right and like they that help, triangle they help each other to stand so um we are their co-warriors and yes how it looks in everybody's household as far as what people wear, what people do, whether they cover 100% of the time, they cover part of the time, um, is covering required or not required. Um, my husband doesn't require anything of me, but there are things that he appreciates, um, and that's a little bit different. So everybody's household has to be a little different. Talk to, if you're a female, talk to your head and see what he, and try things out. You know, if you've never covered before, try covering for a week and see if it changes your attitude and it changes the things that you remember. And it reminds him also of his place. So for women who are um, the ones coming to Torah, the ones who are coming in first, it's okay if you are the one coming to Torah before your spouse. It's all about you live it and then they will respond to that. Change the dynamic in your household by following Yah and watch how the other person changes, even if you say another word. Head covering is a powerful thing, Dudley. It is a very powerful thing. It I changes love like a man. Talking next to each other and like yeah. they're totally probably together. Head covering is one of those things that people think is for the woman. Yeah. And I would, I would question that very often the head covering changes a man. I'll just tell you a story. Like you're in public as a woman, if you're right. wearing basically modest clothing and some type of head covering that maybe is a little bit different than maybe just a hat, like something that right. looks religious in head covering, yeah. men will like literally open doors, do things for you. Like there is a power in it. <clears throat> There's a power in wearing zizi. Yeah. Absolutely, it's very different. And zizi to me is like, it's a really cool thing to see people um, notice your zizi. I mean, they—it's like that. What would Jesus do bracelet thing? But right. it's even more obvious than a what would Jesus do bracelet. Confirmation, like you're one right. of us. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> And Having Earl's daughter, to, right. you need to be here because you're totally a back porch bitch. You are totally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get out here, and back porch <laughs> bitch, with us. I know. Yeah, if all three of us were like sitting here, so somebody said head covering. Yeah, head covering can be as simple as a headband. It, you know, and everybody's got a different thing on how much they need to cover, or they need to cover completely or partially. But if you've never done it before, throw a hat on, wear it, and tell your husband why you're wearing it. Right. Throw a small headband on and tell your husband why you're wearing it. Be available in the store otherwise. Okay, so I just got pricing back, y'all. So, like, these, the pony hats are okay. expensive. Like, they're really cool, though. If you guys haven't right. seen it, it has, like, crisscross elastic in the back. So you can have a high pony, a mid pony, or a low pony. But, yeah, like, we're looking at, like... 35 bucks for an embroidered pony hat and then like $25 you're for, not on the wrong show uh, <laughs> like they have a distressed hat like this, this you know like where it's kind of faded and all that but it's the regular you know just clasp at the bottom um, the regular distressed hat is going to be like 25 oh, but yeah. um, the embroidery is Depending on the lady's like work log, it's gonna be anywhere from like two to four weeks to get the chicken put on there. But 
I'm going to put them in the store. It's going to be in the store with the option of the regular hat or the upgrade for the pony hat. And uh, yeah, they'll be out there, but they're not cheap. What would you recommend for head carving in office setting? Um, I guess I would say it depends on your office, but something, if you check out Garlands of Grace, <clears throat> Garlands of Grace makes ones that are really good. They're kind of, some of them are only a couple inches wide, so it kind of just looks like a wide headband, something like that. Um, and they come in different styles. You can get them in different plain colors. Even wearing something like somebody, I saw a rain cat talked about when she wears a full covering, you feel royal, and I do. Like I have worn a full covering that I like braided it and then put it in, made it into a bun. And you do, you feel like, it's like you're dressed up, you know, you've right. got this whole thing. Um, and I cannot wait, actually, most of my head coverings are stuck in my sea can. Um, I was gonna but say, as simple as a bandana. I mean, I know a bandana is probably not like office-like, but there makes some like wide headbands that are lace. I was gonna say like the wide, you know, like the three inch wide, but they're lace Headbands or they're, that, yeah. Look up just like on Etsy or even on Amazon, just a basic wide headband. You can find them to match your outfits. You can find some kind of right. plain ones, some lacy ones, gold, you know, different things. You only need a few. Now I will tell you there is a huge clue. If you're going to wear um, <laughs> any kind of headband, you can find them very cheap on Amazon. It's called a wide velvet headband and you can find them in different sizes the velvet headband is the key to keeping it on your head so it doesn't fall off all the time it'll slide back yeah, on your some hair of them are really soft and they just kind of <coughs> yeah so um you get a velvet headband you got to put it the right way if you put it on the wrong way it'll just slide off but you kind of feel you put the headband on and you want it to like you feel some um you're going the wrong way you're going against the nap um and if you feel that you can put your wide headband right over the top of it um and it will stay and right. so that is it's a, is it just supposed to be when you're in public? Technically, when you read the command, it's written for three different reasons. Three different reasons. One is that you wear it as a sign to the angels. Two is that you wear it during corporate prayer and prophecy. So that would be church. Like a group setting. Like a group setting, anytime you're in a church setting. And then the other one, and so it's in prayer, and some people would say, shouldn't you be wearing it anytime that you're praying? Um, and then the third one is to show submission to your husband. So there are many groups that believe that you don't need to cover until you're married. Yes, a marker for married. And so if you read, there's kind of three very different verses. And don't be confused by the, the covering because if you're shorn, you can't be covered. Anyway, so it's not long hair. Um, no, so no making lasagna with angels. To make no, no Dudley. No, no, none of that. Um, Pretty sure I wear it until bed. You got to yes, cover. if you have soft hair, it's hard to keep them on. Velvet headbands are essential. Yeah. They're amazing. It's like the, it's like the little trick that nobody is telling everybody until you all of a sudden know, and they're right. like, yeah. It's like Velcro for your hair. It's though. Velcro. <laughs> it is amazing. Can bananas be used, or is that a note? You can wear bandanas. You can so, wear hats. No, it doesn't. You can wear a thin specify. headband. Like. like Use that to Read your the verse. advantage. First Corinthians. That, like somebody if, tell me exactly. I First feel like 13. if it was a big deal to Yah, he would be like, bam, 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 bam. Like this, 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 this. This is what's required. But he doesn't. It's very open ended. <coughs> about Hair clips. If that's what you're convicted to do, right. do it. Tactical headbands. Yes. Bandanas. Because like called? a lot Shemogs? of times. Like, I just wear my hair in a ponytail. Like, right. I just pull it back and then like, Shemogs are tasseled on the four corners. Yeah. Lasagna night, or like date, date night, night. <laughs> my hair comes down and it's beautiful and flowy. No, no, like, little <laughs> princess. Uh, Al For my man. Alanya, what was that? How do you say that? Alanya? Eliana? Eliana. Probably Eliana. Eliana. Happy yeah. birthday, Eliana. Happy birthday you wanna sing? to you. You want to sing? Somebody's birthday. Eliana's birthday? Eliana's birthday. Eliana's daughter. Eliana's Men can shave their head. Women are not supposed to. Uh, Eliana is a daughter. All right. Let's do it. Okay. And a one, and a two, and a... 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eliana. Many more. Okay, I totally missed Ali Alena. Oh my gosh, Elena. Oh, it's just Elena. I got that totally wrong. If I did that, is it E L A? Is been going full hottie lately. Not sure. I noticed that she used to be a super like wide head, wide headband, head covering, and she's totally like hair down, curly now. But you dudes, like, nurse? if y'all don't know this, women's sex sells. And, like, is that wrong of her to be pretty? <laughs> you know, like, <clears throat> it depends who she's selling to. Is she selling to out there like what men? she's got? <laughs> I mean, I mean, there, she's pretty. She is pretty. And... You but know, she like, used to always wear the wide headband. But, thing, but is that it was a sin she... for just a woman to be pretty? No, no. Use your own so, judgment. But like, she if she's husband. wearing, you know, like low cut, like cleavage, and shirts, she's not, and she's you know, pretty but modest, exactly. Right. And she's so, not. And I think she was married, and I believe her husband died. I believe she's a widow. Oh. So maybe that's what changed. She is Torah. Is all I was saying. Yeah, she is definitely Taurus. She's very pretty. She is very modest, but she used to wear wide headbands, and then she doesn't. Why women can't shave their hair? Um, so oh it, goodness, it says so that you're not supposed to shave your hair, but it's I don't like think it's a women. Like, I think she's looking for a new man. Yeah, that's kind of like the women don't dress like men. Like, especially nowadays. Like, okay, let's see. She what really does it say pretty. about women shaving? We have one, hair. two, three, four short-haired men. Whereas we have one, two, three long-haired women. So it's kind of like my girls are all really long-haired. Right. So I, I believe that's kind of like along those lines. Like, I would not women look pretty should not cut around. their hair short like a man's. Uh, right, Lena. So we said that wrong, and we apologize. Well, as a widower, is there anything I should be doing differently? Jane Johns, I'm confused by that. A woman, her hair is her glory. I think it says. Don't call me. It does say her hair is a glory, and I believe it says that she's not. A woman shorn is something. Right. And I don't think that means, like, women, you it's shouldn't not. cut your hair. No. I think it's just that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't go with, like, the boy cut. Right. Or the pink And we're not cut. talking about yeah. medical reasons. We're not talking. Right. Like, there's so many different yeah. things on there. Vikings, what? Vikings like, don't dull their blades. That was on back their, when I was, like, 13. No, it's on their enemies. Yeah. <laughs> what's bear what's bear saying let's spy can you hear him back there his voice travels doesn't it yeah as a woman does she have long hair glory is to her because a hair is the most covering has been given to her yeah first corinthians 11 has a lot of different things on there and so i would you know tell you guys go read it for yourself it's always like go read your bible and figure it out for yourself but know that the the word covering there is different so don't you know it's not that her hair is a covering it's doesn't the, the covering in the long hair is a covering and the covering in the woman should cover her head are not the same word right does bear stop talking when he is sleeps probably not he does Where talk in his sleep I would not but know if he talks when he he snores more sleep. often than he talks. It's either talking or snoring, yeah. probably. So somebody said, "Cray, my hair has been past my butt my whole life. I've always wanted to shave it off just once." Okay, so y'all, I've done this. So I went from like hair down to Patriot nurse almost to my knees. Like it was mid thigh, but closer to my knees. I went from that to like an inch long buzz 
pixie cut all the way around in a day. And it is like, it's very, I don't know the word, like empowering, empowering maybe to have done that. Um, I think it also depends on your head. What but it is, also if you're like, married, what does you your head think? Yeah. Right. But it also freaks you out because you're used to like hair. Oh my weighs gosh, a the lot. first time you do shampoo when you've cut your hair off, you put way too much shampoo right. in your hair. But it it's also cathartic. freaks you out yeah. because hair weighs a lot. And so I would say like totally notice the change. Go go shorter. Definitely. But, I do not like long hair on a man. Mm -hmm. Like, stop it. You know, like your shoulders or they all you know, look like beta males to me with long hair. The, the longer bob. Like my requirement for a haircut is I have to be able to put, put it in a ponytail. ponytail. <laughs> like if I have like or the half down, half up in a ponytail, that's good. But no, somewhere no, on all, my head, it's all got to be a ponytail. ponytail. It's either short enough you don't need a ponytail or short enough to put. In. Yeah. yeah, there's like that in between. Like I would either have to be like shaved or ponytail. Um, yeah, I have done that. I have donated my hair four four times, I think now. Um, whenever I get pregnant, so some of you have heard my story um, about when I get pregnant, I'm really, really sick and that's why I cough a lot now. But is if I find out I'm pregnant, I immediately go get my hair cut. It's still ponytailable, but as short as I can get it and still get it into ponytail is for me um, my rule. And I usually have hair down to my back, so every time I get pregnant, it's like, whoop, I cut it off. Um, because I'm so sick and I'm in bed for usually seven to eight months. I yeah, I don't want to puke on my hair, and I it becomes I can't shower very often because I don't take care of myself very well very well. There's not a lot of self-care when you're throwing up 50 to 70 times no. a day. So, you know, um, we, we try to keep my hair as little, as short as possible to be able to do that. So for me, that I, I always donate whenever I do that. Um, but I tend to let my hair go long. And my blame foe, never forget. Blame foe, never forget. Dudley said it. Um, he fixed the microwave, y'all. He, he and Hami put a new microwave in last night. At like 10 o'clock. He was and like, so are we going to do this thing? I'm like, I guess yes. so. Like, let me he go was get way tools. more motivated than she was. Yeah. Like, <coughs> but he's I like, guess we'll I, do this. I bought the microwave. Let's put this sucker in. Right. Um, somebody asked about like a freak, freakishly long length for men's beards. So like, okay, what is that picture you found today? Oh, y'all, okay. she found a picture of T today with like, he's like a baby. It was my Facebook memory. It was a, it was a baby and a baby beard. It was like, I could see, you could see his cheeks. This was like pre-YouTube, <laughs> y'all. It was like this really thin, yeah, you could see his know. cheeks. Anyway, okay. Yeah, and I've had six babies, y'all. I've been actually pregnant nine times. I've had six babies and I've been pregnant nine times. And yeah, it's that bad every time. People are like, oh, the next pregnancy might be different. So it's not. So y'all, check this out. Can y'all see this handsome fellow? Look at that. What about his 15 year old picture? Get Look at cheeks. that. <laughs> That's some hot stuff right there. So, yeah. That's baby tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's Sharina. Absolutely. I, you know, medical concerns, I think, are totally different. That was shortly after Cheyenne choked him out. Yeah. <laughs> This choked him out. You're showing a cub. Yeah. That's not a bear. That's a cub. Right. <laughs> what about his it's bear's old? dating profile. <laughs> no, bears? it was like while we were together. We had been together for maybe two or three years. Only one pregnancy. Yeah. I was so sick. Well, you know, they say some people are different, but, um, oh, shoot. I just messed that up. Same with mine. Like, she was Cheyenne huh? damn near killed me. Oh, she ate and, uh, then Harlan and Aspen were easy peasy, I mean, but yeah. for that me, first we, one, like I thought I was legit. I lost like 60 pounds while I was pregnant. Yeah, that's me. I lose between 20 and 30 pounds the first six weeks. Yeah. Um, and I'm mine so lasted sick. for like HG. If you know months, that it even is called HG, you're my people. Like people are like, I had morning sickness. And I'm like, if you call it morning sickness, you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, la la la. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, pregnancy is not always easy. And that's my whole like, um, yeah, you lost your first trimester. It's hard. It's very, very hard. There's lots of things that can help. There's lots of um, uh, cravings that can help. Lost a lot of weight. Yes, but I always gain it in the end. Right. Um, yeah, I worked... I worked at Lowe's rock when I was pregnant. Mad Kelt, that's insane. His wife rock climbed for like eight, eight and a half but months. But you were the one that killed me because I would be driving the forklift or the cherry picker and like at Lowe's, every 10 feet, they have like a concrete seam. So you would hit it and you'd go like, boom, boom. and then you drive and boom, boom. and that, boom, boom. yay, love you. I would like go diving off of the forklift and to the nearest trash can to puke my brains out getting dive bombed by bugs. Yeah, my sister-in-law and I were pregnant the first time together at the same time, and her name's Renee too. And she literally was like, I woke up one night and I was craving a steak and that's how I knew I was pregnant as she's visiting me in the hospital, you know, with an IV bag being fed through an NG tube in my nose. So yeah, like it's different mm -hmm. things. I've seen shofar men with longer. Yeah, I mean, there are men who do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there are some women who pregnancy makes them better. My sister-in-law says that she plays softball better when she's pregnant. She can hit a ball farther when she's pregnant than when she can. Her center of gravity changes. Yeah, I didn't even know I was pregnant until 5 and 15 years. I know I'm pregnant before the test is positive, y'all. Like, I have to pee on multiple tests to show, to prom to prove that I'm pregnant. Mine's because heartburn. I get nonstop heartburn. I didn't even know what heartburn yes, Danielle, was. Yes, Danielle, amen. Uh, I can tell you what pukes up the best. <laughs> you know it's a different level when you eat based on how it comes up. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely, Torah can help you conceive, especially following Leviticus diet. Absolutely. You know how many people weren't keeping a clean diet, start and they had um, uh, Babies. trouble conceiving, then they start eating clean, then boom, they're miraculously pregnant. Okay. Eating clean, you know, following Yah's laws, and imagine that you actually get to follow God's laws by like being fruitful and multiplying. Uh, yeah, how are you going to multiply when you're putting the wrong fuel in the, in the program? Chocolate milkshakes help. Yeah, those Where's aren't that? bad coming up. Smoothies aren't bad coming up. The worst thing ever, the worst thing ever to throw up is chicken a la king because the peas get stuck in your sinuses for like a week. It's not good. Rice, peas, no, can't do that. I ate like toast and bananas and pickles. <laughs> that was my diet. You were, you were Obedience breeds so blessing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm saying when I was pregnant. Fo just shows, no, Renee, do you hope to conceive again? Absolutely not. That's no. <laughs> no, they're asking me, I think. I'm pretty sure your kids are part of you. I can't, I don't know if you can they see don't get this. This is the, what Fo says is to eat, like, it's too, it's too bright. Yeah. You gotta do I hope to down. conceive again? Um, yeah, for me, I pray that Yah does not bless me again unless he can do it without the puking. So, I love the babies. I would have had 20. Like, y'all, I rock at labor. I can deliver babies no problem, but please don't make me pregnant with them. <laughs> That's my yeah. thing. So, yeah, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had more than six kids. People think six kids is crazy and it's too many. Um, thoughts on circumcision? It's not necessary if you're a Gentile. It's easy as that. My son is not circumcised. Um, My son is. Yeah. <laughs> and it is what it is. Right. Circumcised? You don't have a penis here. <laughs> no, you, you don't have a penis. Your brother has a penis. They cut the skin off the top of the penis. And again... How would you take care of a miscarriage, grid down, mom care, fetus disposal? Um, take care of the mom. Good food, good food, good food and rest. A lot of good food and rest. Um, disposal, it's basically like disposal of everything else, but I uh, disposal of any other human being. I would do the same thing I would do for an adult. And I would have a ceremony and I would bury them just like anybody else, no matter how small that fetus is. Um, they are as much a blessing and a human when they are a... Can be held in your hand as they are when they are a full person. 
so. But it's taking our... They're not going like, in the compost pile is kind of what I'm thinking. Like, no. Right. Like, yeah. Yacht intended you to have that experience, but not have that child. Right. That child was taken already. Right. And for whatever reason, whether it be genetic or sin or sin meaning a, a right. bad food that we have in this world that causes our bodies to be different, you know, all of that. I don't mean sin that was like we purposefully caused, you know. Right. But the idea that that child was not meant for this world. Yeah, my mother had half my junk cut off. Yeah, biblical, and if, you, if you are, if you do feel convicted to circumcise your child, absolutely do it. Find a true moil or somebody who can do true biblical circumcision or somebody in the Torah faith who can do real biblical circumcision because biblical circumcision and what is done in the hospital are not the same things. Right. Uh, miscarriage is very difficult. Um, and as far as, as a mother, a mother is a mother the moment the test is positive or they believe they are pregnant. It does not matter if they carry them to term. They are a mother of that child, and I will tell you that I'm the mother of nine, six that are here on earth. That's what it is. So they're those children who never made it to delivery of a true nine-month viable delivery are no different. We have, we've have we named them. Um, I would recommend that you <coughs> do what you can, pray to Yah about what the sex was, and if you don't know, he will tell you and give that child a name and honor them, pray for them, celebrate them. We have dates for all of ours. We know we have names, we have all of those things. So um, they're celebrated, maybe not in the same way as a birthday of our other children, but like our other children know about them and our other children know that like maybe mom's gonna like go off and well, I used to sit Be on the beach. Sad used to sit day. on the beach in Florida. Yeah. That was my day. I would take my Bible and I would go sit on the yeah. beach and I would eat in a good restaurant that made me happy because food makes me happy. And I would do that. And that's what we do. Life is life, 100%. So, yes, if you've never, if you've had a miscarriage, even if it was 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, go ahead and still give that child pray to Yah and give that child a name because it's not too late they have a name that Yah has given them and it's important that they do that so is adoption okay absolutely yeah so, we are all adopted well and as gentiles as gentiles yeah like in Yah's kingdom like we weren't born into this we were totally adopted grafted for one second the fetus comes out usually without necessarily intervention. Sorry. Right. Doctors will make you think they need intervention. They don't usually. Go uh-huh. ahead. Um, but yeah, we're all grafted in. Um, and absolutely adoption. So a little tidbit that no one probably knows about me is I have two half siblings that were adopted out of my family. So my mom gave them up for adoption. Um, she gave up one for adoption and then she ended up having a accident, accidental pregnancy for the second and contacted the family that had <coughs> adopted the first and they wanted it often happens and that, if yeah. there's a the ability to contact right and so absolutely like there are s- i mean if every christian think of the family number of babies that are aborted every day that's that's a big thing that i used to run a pro-life ministry and went to like washington for the march for life and i used to speak often um and tell my story and the pro-life movement the the number one thing you get asked is well will you adopt all the babies what's going to happen to all these babies they're going to end up on welfare and it's like no if every professing bible believing christian out there adopted just one child they'd all be taken care of right all of them yep and so yeah i mean think of the numbers for aborted babies there are at least that many that the parents choose okay i'm not well enough i'm not of sound mind enough i'm not in strong enough belief like 
I'm not in a position to raise this child and bring it good <coughs> home. And there's at least that many kids um, that need adoption. So, absolutely, like, uh, I mean, I know me personally, like, I would rather somebody adopt a child than go through in vitro. Like, I, I actually have, like, a big issue with in vitro. Like, yeah, I don't know about other people. I personally don't think in vitro is biblical. I, I have, think like, you're messing with I, God's but I've word. never been, yeah. but I've never been infertile. So, I would never judge somebody who does in vitro and I'll start with that I absolutely I have never been infertile and I absolutely would not judge anybody who does it because I've never been there and I've never walked in those shoes but just biologically it doesn't feel like it's the right thing now um there's another word for it basically turkey baster kind of method and there's, right. a, I'm, there's a better word for this absolutely um and there's lots of other things that I'm okay with, but I just, that would be a line for me. Everybody's got their line and that would be a line for me. <coughs> um, but abortion, there's a big thing when I ran a pro-life ministry for a while and our big thing was not only dealing with abortion versus adoption, but there are many, 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 many women, especially who even have my condition of hyperemesis gravidarum who abort because they feel like they have absolutely no choice. Yes. Right. Because they are so sick, and some doctor says to you, and a doctor has asked me this every single time until I got with a midwife. So, four of my pregnancies, a doctor basically told me, like, I can give you a drug that will fix this, but you have to abort if you agree to do this. And um, there are many women who would continue. I will definitely go on the birth control. I promise you we'll get there. Um, who would keep their babies if they were helped to parent, okay? So we put a lot of, you guys, potato is like attacking my leg. Um, there are many parents, many women, who would continue their pregnancies if they had the support from being sick, if they had the support, like if we're going to support adoptive parents and we're gonna help them pay for the adoption and we're gonna help them do it, why are we not just helping the parent? Let's help people parent. Let's teach people how to parent. Let's put teen moms who've been kicked out of their home because they became pregnant, help them to get an education and continue to be able. So our ministry was very much supportive of teaching people and supporting people who genuinely wanted to parent but were too terrified to do it and didn't have the support to do it. Because most people don't want to abort their babies. I've stood outside the clinics, I have prayed with those women, I have pleaded with those women, and very often they're just terrified um, and they just need support. And if somebody in their life would tell them, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna figure this out, they would not do it. And so, yes, <laughs> my daughter's birth mother had HG. HG is horrific. I have stood in front of clinics so many times and <clears throat> with women who said, but you don't understand how sick I am. And the doctor told me I had to come here. And that's the thing is they don't do it in the hospital. And then they send you to the horrible, disgusting clinic to do it. Right. So you feel ashamed. <coughs> like, because, <coughs> y'all, like, every state's different with adoption laws. Um... But there are ways around it. Like, when my mom delivered, we were living in North Carolina, which I think, like, after she delivered, the child would have to go into foster care for sometimes up to, like, 30 to 60. Sometimes yeah, even six it was, months. It was a while. And so Usually it's, like, 30 to 60 days in their place, but the adoption can't happen until six months right. or a year. Um, and so she ended up flying out to California and I hate to say it, like, liberal state, but, like, their adoption laws were literally, like, she signed my brother and sister over to their new parents, and they took her home and him home. And so every state's absolutely different, but there are ways around it if you don't have... But somebody Any needs to other remind option. people that there's an option. There's and an option. And that's my there's biggest thing. There's always is an option, y'all. There's 
these, you know, Your pregnancy centers, centers and they only focus on abortion. And Planned Parenthood, they only focus on abortion. Yeah. They don't talk about the other options. I am pro-choice except for adoption. I don't, I am pro-choice except for murder. <clears throat> there are many other choices. And one of them, and the one that most even, unfortunately, are Christian pro-life there's a whole sector, section of Christian pro-lifers who only believe in adoption. They leave out the helping the person parent. And that is a really, really big thing to me. Um, I don't know. There's something going on here that we totally missed. I don't but know the joke, but if somebody needs <coughs> fan hammered, like, yeah, let us know if something, if like all caps if we're missing a band hammer and somebody needs to be banned but i think it's okay um somebody want to talk about birth control and this is like a it's a thing within the christian movement within the torah movement with everything kind of like what does birth control hey. look like go on in <laughs> she's like we're talking about all kinds of stuff here yeah conversations um, about to get adult <laughs> it's about to get too adult as a teen father i can say it's a way of life yes and there are and unfortunately men i mean we don't even talk about how men deal with abortion i mean and and if anybody out there has had an abortion one let me tell you there are resources available that will help you work through it um message me message ntx mag message admin at bear independent i can put you in touch with um there are bible studies literally that will help you work through things and find forgiveness and find that there are even ones for men um and right now i can't think of them off the top of my head i have the resources and i will get them to you so men often are put in a situation where they want to keep the baby and the, the girlfriend or whoever wife aborts the child anyway um bye tommy Okay. <coughs> I think I got somebody. Right. I got big man and oh my gosh. He's back. T can you jump on? Me? Yeah. We need to We got some a spammer. Hammering. We have no ban hammering. He's got like four accounts. You gotta so hide far. him. Is, um, I just removed him. Hide user from the channel. There's no, there there's no blue wrenches on here? I no, don't know. I think they all left. We can make Phelps one. Can I make Phelps one? Of yeah. course. Phelps, you're a mod. Get after Look it. Look I am. <laughs> Do you need you want to just yell at people? No. Just yell at him. No, we're not going to yell at this poor, miserable asshole because he's got nothing better to do. Uh, and let's see. Road trips, he just keeps saying. Let's see. Who else do we trust in here? Yeah. Why is it Poe Diddy? Come on. Poe Diddy. Comment. Comment. You can make your mod. See, this is why we do it on my channel. We may not get 500 people, but we ain't got no bullshit. All right, mom. Too bad. I know. It's like after 10. Mad Pelt's back. Somebody probably texted him. Somebody probably texted Mad Pelt. Save the ladies! <laughs> Are you just deleting people? Are you making more mods? I'm just over here running the business. Don't mind me. He's just like clicking all over the screen. I know a thing or two about this interneting. Phelps says we're good now. Okay. Bless you, but hold on. Bless you, brother, but little did I know that while I was out of town, you were back porching on my back porch. I told you that. We were eating pizza on your back porch. I know. I'm jealous. Your bitches. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm just. No, we had a blast. Just, uh, I know. I'm just yeah. lamenting the fact that I was in a hotel in Rando Town, you drank Texas. Your whiskey. Drinking Miller Lite. Drinking my, <laughs> drinking my peanut butter whiskey. Anyway, here's my ladies again. <coughs> Well, Bo's we lady go. and my there lady. There we go. Dudley should have always been a wrench. Agreed. Well, he's wrenched up now. They're all wrenched up now. Yeah. He's gone. They're like, we got him. <laughs> the nail that sticks in his get whacked. We totally missed that. All of a sudden, it was like. <laughs> right. So, 
Whatever. Report it. Like, mass report our live stream. Okay. What? For truth? Dudley is good. Whoever, like, silence Dudley. Dudley is good no matter what. So, yeah. J.A. Dudley, if you don't know, like, he's our peeps. Right. It's probably Canadian prepper. <laughs> <laughs> Don't silence the dud. Is Dudley not a mod? Yeah, Dudley's a mod. Right. Yeah, I don't know how um, somebody could silence him. Hey, is Dudley coming for Sukkot? Dudley, are you coming for Sukkot? Come yeah. for Sukkot. Alright, good. The support stuff. Okay, if you're interested in any kind of support stuff, any type of abortion recovery is usually what we call it, um, message me. Um, however you can get to me, whether it's NTX mag and say, this is for Renee, um, admin at barrierindependent.com. Any of anything that you can get an email to us. If you're on women's group, meet me tomorrow night, put Renee in the subject line, put Renee in the subject like, line. We will definitely, we get so get many there. emails. We got to have, um, um, yeah. Oh, gotcha. <coughs> whack a troll. Keep whacking them, guys. Right. Um, yeah, get with me. I have taught the classes. They're amazing. Um, <coughs> there is definitely recovery for that. So don't keep beating yourself up if you're there. It's got. We got it, Ring Cat. We have all the mods on now. They will get him. Um, where were we? We were talking about birth control. Right. So this is something she and I have never discussed before. So this should be interesting. <laughs> what? Anyway, so what's your thoughts on birth control? Okay, so I mean, I can only speak from like personal experience since Torah, um, and if we ain't planning a baby, then the eggplant pulls out before it erupts. We're having a whole different thing over here than We're talking birth do. control. So. <coughs> and not right. every man can pull that off. So sometimes right. you might need a barrier method, as they call it. Right. Barrier methods are good. Sometimes so. Sometimes abstinence, <laughs> abstinence is the best option. Abstinence during certain times of the month certain times of the month so nfp the catholic church actually has got this one right if you've ever if you if you're interested in nfp the rhythm method it doesn't work if you don't actually know what you're doing if you actually know what you're doing it can work oh um because i think keeping sex in marriage gives a spring job absolutely right sex is a gift for marriage and sex is important for marriage this is as important as communication and that's where the abstinence <coughs> comes into play like you don't go don't trust a condom if a guy has education yeah you don't go screwing everybody that you come it is not automatic damnation across 100%. or that you're sexually attracted to don't you be letting men enter the kingdom if they're not right there are plenty of be. other things that you can do to get the taco saucy or repent. Yes, Dudley. It's about repentance and forgiveness, <laughs> and it often involves forgiving yourself. Yes, y'all, we completely <laughs> lost the They're just, like, dying Bear's over here. looking at me very disapprovingly. So, what kind of music is best for the rhythm method? I'm thinking Janet Jackson. Very oh, white. Very <laughs> white, Janet Jackson. Let's get it um, on. So if you've not taken the class on the rhythm method, there's definitely a class. There are some great books out there, Taking Charge of Your Fertility. Taking Charge of Your Fertility is a book about how to get pregnant, but you can use the same information for how to not get pregnant. They had to write a whole book <coughs> Yes. Hey, honey, Uptown Funk sex. is good. Okay. So yeah. Um, if you do it 30 days in a row, you're probably pretty good. Okay. I'm pull up method sure, is very like, effective some, like, when done correctly. <laughs> Rhythm What's, method, pull out for some people, it can work. Right. But there, but you, if you're having sex, yeah. breastfeeding don't work, nothing. Just, no. No. Mm -mm. Just FYI, no. Um, 
if you are having sex, you can get pregnant. Period. You should not be in a relationship where you are having sex and pregnancy will cause you to be like extremely upset. I'm not saying you won't be like, ah, oh, not really what we had planned. But I'm saying like you need to be in a situation where it right. if, if isn't the end of the world. If you're, if you're doing it, you if can you're have doing a baby. It to the full extent <laughs> of doing it, you need to be aware of those repercussions. I believe that rhythm method and barrier methods are okay for birth control. When we get into hormonal and other things like IUDs, implants like that, I do not believe that right. they are okay. Don't start, no stuff won't exactly. be no stuff. Sister Kate. Exactly. Yeah, she didn't say it, somebody said she no said it. Or Kate. if there is stuff, <coughs> finish it with other methods other than the stuff. The stuff. Right. Birth control is still killing this a baby. This is what happens Chemical when women birth control. Talk. Okay, if you want to know birth control pill, things like IUDs, implants, things right. like that, they still allow for conception. They just don't allow for implantation in most methods, in most of the methods. So if there can be conception, that is a baby. Right. Period. So don't do things that can allow for implementation as either their primary or secondary. So most people will right. say an IUD, it's a secondary method that, a, that causes the non-implantation. The primary method is causing a hostile environment for the sperm and literally cutting off the tails of the sperm so that they can no longer swim. That is still possibly allowing for it. So as long as, if in any of the primary, secondary, triary, whatever, third, fourth, fifth tertiary. is tertiary, if any of those things allow for abortion, meaning after conception, the baby is no longer allowed to live, right. that would be against Yah's law. If it is a barrier method, which is condoms, female condoms, um, Diaphragms. diaphragms anything like that that is a barrier method and those are but again if Yah's telling you to not use those things and he's telling you to conceive that would be a sin because you are not obeying Yah. right period yep. it Agreed. doesn't really matter Agreed. what you do and people always say well i'll just use those things and if Yah wants it he'll make it happen anyway Right. That's okay. like, I'm going to sin anyway, and he'll make me go to jail if it's wrong. Like, it's just, no. Right. You are not happy. This line. is what they believe. The earth and my, are, my, my birth control stance lines up very much with Catholicism, right. yet, because it is biblical, yet I do not align with Catholicism in any other way. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's no to wrapping it up. Like, <coughs> I think that that's important to note of other religions that there might be something that, like, one part, right? Some, or maybe two part of it, parts right? of that religion you do agree wholeheartedly <laughs> with. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're Catholic because you agree that way, right? Um, so and somebody, it's not it's well, not wrong <coughs> because you you it, side with because them on my that. alignment is is similar to the Catholic beliefs does not make me Catholic and does not make uh, what right. I believe wrong. So somebody said, <coughs> "What about birth control for your periods? That would be a health concern if you're doing it strictly for a health concern. Right. That would be different. But if you're using it as a birth yeah. control." Like as a secondary, again, well, it's like an IUD. The secondary method is abortion. So I would say like there's a lot of, as far as like the period regulation, like when I, when I first got my period, it was guaranteed the night before I started my period, I would wake up at like 2 a.m. and start throwing up. And I would throw up, like I would have one good like throw up and then the rest of the day was dry heaving. And I would miss all day at school and it was miserable. I mean like 20 times, 30 times I would rush to the bathroom to just dry, heat. like nothing was left in my body <coughs> to expel. And I was 13. 
So my mom put me on birth control to regulate my hormones because that's what it was. It Your was hormones a spike. And if she'd known herbals, if she'd right. known it was oils. a spike in hormones that caused <coughs> me to go through that hell. So there are a lot of alternative methods. Good question, Phelps. Remind me if I don't answer that because it's a really good one. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, there are a lot of our alternative methods to regulating that womanly time um, so that it's not so astronomically miserable. Okay, so somebody Phelps. asked about tubal pregnancy, which was before Phelps' this question, oh. which is a good question. <coughs> somebody said, and they also asked about permanent, like, vasectomies, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of things to talk about, but <coughs> one, tubal pregnancies. If you have a tubal pregnancy, it is a life-threatening condition, and it must be changed. Usually that involves removing the tube. They're, the secondary effect of removing the tube <coughs> is the baby dying, but it is not an abortion. Um, does it cause the baby to die? Yes. Can it, is there another way? There's a whole, like, can they do an implantation? It's never been successful. So if it involves your life, yes. Now then people try to take that and say, well, abortion for the life of the mother, okay? Find me a reason other than a tubal pregnancy that a woman needs to abort to save her life that does not involve the necessitating of delivery. Right. Often, delivery is necessary, and delivery early may be necessary, but murdering the baby inside of the womb is not necessary to save the life of the mother. Delivery, absolutely. And does that mean the baby may not live because it's early? Yes. Absolutely. And there are some conditions when that absolutely happens. The age of viability, which means the age of when a baby can be young enough to live outside the womb, is changing dramatically all the time. <clears throat> a tubal can absolutely kill a mom. And when you're fixing a tubal pregnancy, you are not aborting a baby. You are keeping a mom alive by removing that portion of the tube. Period. There's no other way to do to fix a tube. They don't blow it out. They remove that portion of the tube and they carterize this side and they carterize this side and they remove the baby. The baby is not aborted. Right. And so it's one of those things that it's 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 different. And some people would say, oh well, the mom should just die. And previous to our lives, ectopic, if you call it tubal, it's the same thing. Women did die. They died all the time. But often they're removing one tube, they're not removing the other. Women can go on to have many, many, many beautiful babies after they've had an ectopic on one side. Next question was vasectomies and things like that. Between you and Yah, it doesn't say specifically in the Bible um, permanent removal of fertility, whether it be on the female side or the male side. <clears throat> there are many, many side effects of that. So don't go into it lightly. And my advice to all new mamas when I meet them and I talk to them is don't make any decisions within the first year of having a baby. Your baby must be at least a year old <laughs> because that first year sucks. The pregnancy sucks. <laughs> like, don't make permanent changes to your fertility either during pregnancy or when the within the first year if so i would have only had one child and not had any more so praise yah that he did that what the heck Jane mad Kelly? how much of you <laughs> oh we got all kinds of things <laughs> Canuck, you came back and we got all kinds of mods we had all kinds of things going on so oh and patriot plumbers here <coughs> patriot Shalom. plumbers black it does not okay so yes so what the next question was who was it phelps added asked what did you ask again phelps there was a third question that i was trying to remember glad you called it murder is what it is it's absolutely murder i was 43 she got pregnant abortion was her option or going to be eight by six absolutely um and, and if you guys ever want to see my testimony or know anything about my testimony, I'm happy to share with you one of the times that I spoke and told my testimony. 
I actually have had two abortions in my teenage years and I have complete repentance and praise Yah, a complete forgiveness for that. And I've gone through a lot of biblical therapy on all of that. So I would, ooh, shoot. I wouldn't even suggest you to anybody even health concerns. Yes. So again, hysterectomies, vasectomies, all of those things, they have a lot of side effects. Leave Yah's system the way it's supposed to work unless there is a health and medical reason to change it. Um, even... <laughs> yes, Mad Kelp's like, I got wrenched. Um, it, it's not as simple as you're breaking something that Yah made to work a certain way. When you're breaking a system in the way it's supposed to work, it's going to cause potential problems. Right. So my husband and I have still been praying about it um, because for me to get pregnant again, as some of you have seen just a little small snippet of my health concerns during pregnancy, for me to get pregnant again would probably be potentially life-threatening. Um, doctors have told me to never, ever, 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 ever do it again. Um, and it's our, my youngest daughter is five and um, we still haven't done anything permanent to change that. So it's still something that is an extreme concern of ours and an extreme prayer for us as to whether we do anything. Your snake birth control Mine is to ovarian only cysts. Like, to have a period twice a year. Um, it is not healthy. Anything. That was... Or not <coughs> Over, like they don't do they're the explosive right. bombs. They're explosive bombs. Yes. So, so in your situation, using things that are <coughs> herbally, yeah, <coughs> or even chemical birth control to treat that as a health concern to me would be the correct thing to do. But I would start right. in the herbal realm and move I've done forward. Herbal. Right. Like I haven't right. gone and chemical, I don't, but, but yeah, I have done <coughs> I've done herbal to deal with the ovarian cysts because. They are so excruciatingly painful that if you guys haven't had a cyst, you don't know. If you don't have ovaries, you can't talk. Um, right. Phelps asked, what about people who basically use those season things where they basically get a period like twice? They're using chemical birth control to like not get periods. Right. Like um, the DTAP or not DTAP. Uh, I forget what it's called. There's like seasonal or or oh yeah. Well, the in the implants do the same thing, but there's actually like a pill well, there that you was can a take. Shot you used to get that depo was, depo. Yeah. yeah, I got that. I gained thirty pounds in a month. Um, but the idea is honey lemon. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great if it like, would work for my cough. Yeah, she's um, always got a cough. <laughs> probably. Um, so the idea is that some people basically you can take birth control instead of taking the sugar pills for a month. If you all don't know, all those pills don't actually do anything. Only three weeks out of the pills actually do something. When they change to a different color, they're sugar pills um, to just obey the pill. Um, so you, I believe that we do things as Yah created us to do. So stopping having a period for a amount of time as, only for convenience purposes. As minimal of an impact as you can have on y'all's on life. a like, like he created our bodies to work in a certain way and shedding of the lining of your uterus is important. It's detoxifying your body. Women, I mean, there's a reason that men sometimes get like um, iron poisoning oh, and lead poisoning oh, and things. go into heat. Like, it's not just a human thing. It's a, it's a mammal thing. <coughs> like, right. our bodies are, are supposed to do to stuff. To go into heat, to shed the blood. Like, it's meant to happen. So, if you're stopping yourself from doing those things. Yeah, somebody's asking about my cough. My cough is due to the fact that right. I've had Here, six. Cough on me. Cough on me. Somebody <laughs> asked about COVID. I don't, no, don't have even COVID. cover your mouth. Just cough on me. <laughs> Yeah, she's not scared. Okay, I cough all the time. I've lost the lining of my throat because of six, or actually nine, extreme She had pregnancies. six kids throwing up 100 times a day. Between 50 and 70 times right. a day. Think for of what that does to your throat. It's kind of bulimia times like 100,000. Right. Um, yeah, I've had... I ain't scared. So, yeah, what is your fixation? Um, iron poisoning and lead poisoning. Okay, women bleed therefore they lose their iron and their metals through their blood 
men don't. So you have to be careful about using cast iron pots and cooking for men all the time. They can actually get iron poisoning. Um, you have to be careful. That's why men, if you ever see his supplements and her supplements, the only difference is the women's has iron, the men's doesn't. Um, right, because that's literally the difference. Women tend to be anemic. Because we bleed. And especially often. during certain times of the month. <laughs> Right, so we lose our iron. Men don't lose their iron, it stays in their body. And back in the day, men were shot more and cut more and things happened. So they therefore they lose blood, they lose, they lost blood, therefore they didn't have as much problems with iron. Men today with supplementation and not being cut and hurt and things more often, my wife is poisoning me. I know. I'm not saying she's poisoning you, but I'm saying <laughs> if you have a wife, and this is kind of a prepper thing, if you have a wife that is cooking with cast iron pots 100% of the time, you should get your iron checked right? because it's okay. potentially a thing. You can have an overdose. Like, it is possible. But it's it not that you like just cook daily. It's actually cooking. If you cook with things that are acidic, so if you're cooking in cast iron pots, you're that cooking your eggs, the... you're fine. If you're cooking your tomato sauce in your cast iron pot, you can cause lead poisoning things. So, okay, read Leviticus one section at a time. Absolutely. I had no clue about cast iron. So if you're cooking regular things, it's not really a problem. But when you cook acidic things like peppers, um, tomatoes, things like that you actually pull the iron out of the diet and if you're anemic they will tell you cook your stuff in cast iron make your your pasta sauce in cast iron because it's actually an iron that your body can use to make more iron it's a yeah. medi cast iron's medicinal y'all like right me medicinal is good and medicinal can be bad at the same time that's the same thing with herbs if you know your herbs don't just be down in your herbs. Don't be just down in your essential oils. Be careful which essential oils you ingest. There are some that are ingestible. Absolutely, there are some that are not ingestible. Think of it, if it's food, it's probably ingestible. Right. Oregano, cinnamon to a point. Right. Um, I mean, you wouldn't eat an entire bottle of Rosemary, cinnamon. Rosemary, basil. Rosemary, basil, lime, lime lemon, orange. Lemon, 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 lemon. Yeah. If you would eat it, you can probably to, and you have to understand that essential oils are like what, a thousand times more potent, like in one drop to one drop of like a juice. I think it's like a hundred, a thousand or a hundred thousand. Like it's incredibly it's more potent. super, super, super concentrate of whatever herb good night five versus one use same so, with cannabis right there are incredibly good herbs people use tobacco people use cannabis people use all kinds of things as medicine know how to use them get your books citrus soup help you process iron yes they do i don't have a gallbladder i have to limit how many eos i take internally yeah you have to limit especially fatty foods right like um coconut oil things like that one drop of citrus blend in a pitcher of lemonade absolutely now you have to be careful does it is it right <coughs> so like a lot of people has to dilute too yeah like people you gotta have it. like with especially with the potent oils like you gotta have that dilution factor because literally like <coughs> two drops in a thing of water or lemonade is not actually going to dilute somebody's getting both yeah. drops two there is two because it's oil and it's oil and water so there's displacement y'all like it happens and that's why like for the most part with the exception of like lemon oil or lime oil i generally take it in a capsule it's ingestible, but especially in the throat, in the mucous membrane, you gotta be careful. That stuff can be harsh. Um, Displacement happens. I mean, especially like photosensitive oils, like your citrus and stuff, like you get a drink of that, and Oxbile's good. that orange oil is on the top of the water that you just drank, and now you're like third degree burning the top of your so lips. I like to cook with oils because you can mix them with coconut oil, disperse yeah. them properly, and then use them like in baked goods. That's actually a really good thing to be able to do. Anytime you're dispersing them in another oil, you're going to spread it out. So one of the things you can learn is like 
if you somehow get a hot oil on you, mm -hmm. don't use water. No, use oil. oil. <laughs> take another oil, even though it doesn't quite make sense that you're going to take the Aspen oil. I got dye guys in her eye one time. Right. It she actually opened the bottle and like, rubbed it, it. and like rubbed it in her eye. And what did I do? I grabbed like a handful, like a full handful right. and just rubbed of it. coconut <laughs> oil and just like slapped it. Because it dilutes it by however much coconut oil there is there. Mm -hmm. So now she's got two drops of dye guys in three tablespoons of coconut oil. Whereas if you put water on it, it just moves the oil around. She's got right. the two drops and they're here and then the two drops are here and the two drops are here and the two drops are there. Alzheimer's, no aluminum. Ugh, Alzheimer's is the whole thing for me. Yeah, so, I have a history of Alzheimer's in my family. Eliminate aluminum as much as humanly possible and any heavy metals. And and get your hair tested. You can find a naturopath who will test your hair and tell you what your it's heavy in metals a are. Lot of places, y'all. So like deodorants number one, your but it's deodorants, like your toothpaste, your uh, any of your any of your personal care products. We don't realize right. that yeah, like, like shampoos, <coughs> conditioners, like they all have. I forget what it's called. <laughs> it's all aluminum. <coughs> it Something. has all different names, but the idea is our aluminum skin. Oxide. Aluminum oxide. Yeah, I our skin is, is like basically our, our largest organ. Not basically, right. it is our largest organ. And if you're using non-filtered um, water, which most of us are because it's hard to have an entire system, you know, for your for your family. If you can get a shower, you know, head filter, any of those things. Berkey has a great one. Um, yeah, your antiperspirants, your deodorants, any of those things. It's our largest organ. So if you can change anything, you know, yes, change your foods, but also change your personal care because you're literally just yeah, it's so like a many sponge. people like yeah, they're eating just organic, but that. they're not changing their personal right. care like, products. They're still using their Suave or their Vo Buy, whatever. Right, and it's all about yeah. balance. Like, yeah. not everybody can do everything, but think about the things. Deodorant stones are great. Um, I use a good herbal deodorant. I will give you guys a big clue. Berkey for life. Love the Berkey. We all have Berkeys here. Um, <coughs> if you're going to switch from an antiperspirant deodorant type thing and you're going to go herbal or Natural. salt stone or whatever that looks yeah. like, one, if it's got baking soda in it, it can burn you and some people have no problem with it. Some it people can burn. cause a reaction. It's like, like a, it's so you get a big red rash. That it causes a reaction. You're, it's deodorizing. It's right. just you have a big red rash too. Right. I can't use any of the baking soda ones. It's too alkaline for me. Right. But some people will be like, I tried to switch and I stink and I can't stink. Okay, if you stink, it's because you're all clogged up and you need to detox. Go to the store and get yourself either some just charcoal. So you can get just tablets, tablets of charcoal. You can open them up and mix them with some coconut oil. Basically lather your armpits with it for like 10 minutes before you take a shower. Like for a week, wash it off, then you can go natural. Or you can even get like a charcoal face mask to be fancy. But literally um, charcoal in the capsules that you break open, mix them with some coconut oil or even olive oil, lather your armpits with it, it'll help you detox. And another thing is like sodas. Mm -hmm. This is my vice. I know. She, she's it's my a big vice. Soda. I'm a soda person. And I person. used to be a big soda drinker. <coughs> but soda cans are not traditionally lined. So, well, that was where the whole BPA thing came from. BPA right. was actually the lining. Yeah. And now we have BPA free, which is right. the unlined, which actually sometimes bring you back to aluminum. Back to aluminum. <laughs> People don't realize so, that BPA free can actually mean aluminum based. Yeah. So like I used to be a huge Dr. Pepper drinker, y'all. Like before Dr. Pepper, I was Pepsi. Like people used to call me Pepsi girl because I had the freaking perm, like the spiral perm. So I looked just like that girl in like the 90s, early 2000s that would like go up to like the bar and the, there'd be like the cool piano playing in the Trouble background. Chocolate toothpaste is great too. Yep. And she'd always have the Pepsi. That was me. And then I turned Dr. Pepper. No pork after I got fat pregnant. in your soap. No. But. Sodas are a huge clogger. Sodas. 
sodas. No, not no, like Coca Cola, like Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, like the Coca Cola, the Dr. Peppers. Yeah, the diet shit. Like oh, diet you get your brain tumor. brain cancer. Yeah. But I've like, seen them a couple times with the wooden shoes dancing around. I'm not wearing a shirt. It's pretty, you gotta be careful because them wooden shoes will catch fire from all that BLM. Oh, whatever. Uh, whatever. Top cocktails, you know. So, uh, now you've got me talking all Minnesota in. <laughs> we have got to be Cody's mom. I just so, like, I know like, so, I have shirts I that I used to have, like, back in the day I when know. I drank. Like, I used to drink, like, a 12-pack of Dr. Pepper <laughs> a day. A day. Yeah. Like, I had one I had one or two for breakfast, Rain one or buy two that. for lunch, one or two for dinner. Like, it was at least half a 12-pack for, for a day. And not to mention all the other, like, heart shit that happened with that. But... All of my shirts had like the brown pit stains. Okay, so like I'd get hot and sweaty, and eventually after a while, it detoxes everything. It would it would turn into like this brown, like hard, weird feeling stain in your armpit, and like yo, you got lymph nodes down here. So many lymph nodes. So many lymph nodes. And when you got too much of something, <coughs> that's where that goes. That's awesome, Dudley. Whether that sugar or chemicals or aluminum, that's where that goes. And your body just has a certain smell. And your body has a certain smell. Yeah. And like, you'll notice that your smell changes the more you detox. And first, right. at first it kind of gets larger because it's all coming out and then it'll resolve itself and the whole point is getting through that detoxification period and what can you do to help so yourself smell through. me i don't smell nothing okay i haven't showered in a week Ooh. i haven't showered in a week y'all you got no. i still drink soda but i showered yeah but it ain't funky. Yeah, it's not like... It ain't like you lift your... And like everybody's like, oh, that didn't cover. Yeah, no, it's never like that. <coughs> but I've got TMI. Sugar. Kombucha. Oh, we had a whole kombucha discussion. So, but it's all about what you put into your body. This is the only... You would never see have this on a Tactical come Tuesday. Out. No. He is not smelling somebody else's armpit. No. You missed it. We were smelling each other's armpits over here. That's what friends are for. Right. It's who be funky. Sounds so I'll be there smelling your armpit. No. It's about a natural balance, y'all. Like, Hummy shower. Adam and Eve did not shower every Somebody fucking said, day. Hummy, like, go. Go. <laughs> Hummy should shower before she goes in the kitchen to bake. Please. No. They know. You didn't put the 18 and up. Dudley Morning. said she should shower before she goes in the kitchen yeah. to bake. That's the truth. <laughs> and that does happen. <laughs> but baking doesn't happen every day. I mean, <laughs> let's be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Shit just got real. I see it. They said that Hami should shower before she goes to the kitchen to bake. Agreed. And she said it's okay, baking doesn't happen every day. No. Agreed. And that's not a strength, y'all. Like, I mean, if you put out to your man every day, I got mad props for you. Because that shit takes some effort sometimes. It's worse than hugs. <laughs> it's all how about it still comes to lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost it. And women, 
y'all know y'all control the lasagna bacon <laughs> that's going on. <laughs> so, was that? you know, you Can got you control of that. What the rock is cooking. <laughs> y'all are wild. And as this long is, as your man knows, like, if he's like, okay, lasagna's on, and you're like, hey, but, and he's like, no, it's good, and you're like, okay. Okay, I have to be. <laughs> oh, LOL. Yeah. Before making the eggplant. Yeah. Where's the bear? I'm lost. He's coming. He's like, y'all don't embarrass me enough. What the this freak is, is going on over here? Three hours. You've been doing this over three hours? Have we? We're good at this. Uh, you know. 184 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, right? <laughs> Evening, landlocked seller. I have a serious question. Okay, hit me. Send it, Poppy. No, no flip. Yeah, yeah. Poppy. Danielle, shalom. Can I smell bear's armpits? Yeah, but he uses, chem well, semi-chemical shit. He uses no aluminum stuff. Shaloha, concrete. What's, uh, what's a serious question? Good for you, Phelps. <laughs> Magwai, shalom. Sorry, man. You, you could have jumped ship at any time. Ah. I bought 60 acres. We'll have camper and land. What do you think I should do prep-wise? Get your water going first. And then your electricity. Yeah. Get your water going first. And then your electricity. Whatever that is, solar, wind, hydroelectric, battery, excuse me, battery power, whatever. Um, Do we like the Liz Wheeler? Water first, for sure, yeah. water first. You, especially living in the camper trailer, water first. I sniffed his. Hey, you want some more? Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Go to head and go to bed, Danielle. I don't sniff his pits when we're like baking lasagna. I mean, that'd just be weird. Hold on. Tales from the Cryptid. Thank you for praying for my mama, Erin. She's up and eating supper at Flagstaff Hospital. Praise the Most High, man. Hey, and just just check it out. It's it's not because I prayed for her. It's because we prayed for her, and it was the Father's will. So that is awesome. Um. Praise y'all indeed. Hey, Renee, you want your seat back? Y'all need to put a bow on this. Three hours. We're good at this. You're gonna... <coughs> I don't know Liz I don't Wheeler. know who Liz Wheeler is. Yeah, fill me in. Because, like, we don't pay attention to stuff. Yeah, there's this whole world thing that goes on, and then we just kind of do us. Yeah. We, we just stay in our lane every day. Truth not fiction matters. Shalom, brother. Yeah, she's, she's down she's and curly sexy. now. She's being too yeah, sexy. I, I heard she must be back in the market again because she's like kind of hookering it up now. <laughs> okay, she's, she's like but super she's not, modest with like, like curly hair without a head right, covering. She's on. got her head down. No, 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 no. Her. But there's a huge difference uh, between when she's on the market uh -huh. and when she's not. <coughs> and so, but. Also, I don't know her from, I've never met her before, I'm just saying, like... I don't know if you all can hear this, but he's got a whole thing going on behind the camera. At some point... This like, Wheeler exposes the, the Democrats. Who hasn't exposed the Democrats, y'all? Like, it's just stupid people being blind. If they haven't seen what's to be seen, they are just stupid people being blind. <laughs> Y'all, she lost her mind. You guys said the, the D word. <laughs> Anybody else want to say a word that totally, like, makes Hami flip out? Anybody Democrats. else got something? Anybody else gonna be, somebody said something about Democrats. She was like, Anybody else stupid. want to drop the D word? 
<laughs> I mean, End of we're story. not talking eggplant here. We're when will a tactical like, chicken hat be available? They? Again, they don't care how much they are. They want a tactical chicken hat. Okay, how well, much is it going to be? Coming. Pony hat is going to be like thirty-five bucks. You can get the excuse the hat hair, y'all. No D this words, people. What happens when? It's super cute okay. though, y'all. So like, this is the pony hat. It's got the elastic. You got one, two, <coughs> three, <laughs> three holes. Three holes. Three holes. Three holes. Just from. You really only want to use two. <laughs> it's a distressed hat. So right, it's meaning it's like, it's got like looks like you've been working in it, even if you cut, haven't been working. And it's like it's like well used but new, right, y'all? But the so, and it's got like the trucker mesh, so. I'm your sorry, heat, trying to take marketing pictures. Here. Your heat can vent when you get Jeez. when you get hot headed. What are you trying to do? Over there. I'm gonna put it can, it three can holes vent out. <laughs> three holer. Yeah, you only hear this stuff on back porch bitches. Yeah. T J sensors and stuff too much. <laughs> I know he does. Okay, somebody asked. Here's a good question. There's a tour for that. We need it. Is there a tour for there? No, it's there is a tour for that. Yeah. We need a graphic, and we just we're kind of lost on the idea of like where to go. Like we don't like, have like the, like a like the like speaky cloud. Like we're kind of struck with like what would be cool behind the words. Like is it a cloud? Is it like the big tablets? Like what? That's where what we're struggling. If we could come up with a really cool graphic, yeah. then I think we could do it. So somebody asked, and I think looks more used than it. Right. <laughs> it looks more used than so it like, is. This hat's going to be like 35 bucks because like Hummy the Biscuits hats kitchen towels. Oh, expensive. that would be cool. Stumps, Roots, and Shoots, or Hummy Biscuits kitchen towels. Mm -hmm. I would buy those. I would totally buy those. Uh, okay, there was a question. I totally missed it. Where was it? What do we think about the Kyle Rittenhouse incident? Hummy, your opinion, not mine. Tommy's okay. opinion on Kyle. That's the guy. That's the kid I know. The I know who it is. So, y'all, slap. I like that. A slap. There's a tour for that. Mm -hmm. Smack. <coughs> Smack your ass. Yeah. It should be. No ass. Yeah. No, no. I mean, not like ass in like literal. <laughs> but don't go down. Like what? Like. <laughs> with the right. Right across your face. Yeah. Um, Dudley is now our graphics designer. I mean, no no offense to Chad. We love Chad too, but that was a good idea, Dudley. So Kyle. Kyle. I waited a hot minute before I formed an opinion. Because there's a lot of different scenarios that this poor kid, because that's what he was, he was a fucking kid could have gotten himself into but after seeing everything we try to reserve judgment for the fact of like there's always we as husbands as as being married couples we understand there's his side her side and the truth right i mean it's the same thing with george floyd like the few the footage that they released at first it's like yeah what the fuck that happened and then you're kind of like, there's more to the story. There's always more to the story. There's something out. Like, they wouldn't have done just this if something hadn't provoked it. So, the night went. I see stuff, and I tried to, like, withhold opinions, judgment, until after that stuff. Because, like, the mass media is going to take the headline and run with it. They're going to run with it and get as many people victim, on board victim, victim, victim. with their agenda that they can. And then a few days later, the truth is going to come out. Somebody said he shouldn't have been there, but he did a damn good job. They didn't say damn, exactly. I said damn. But. Like a 17 year old kid should not be put in that position. He shouldn't be. But he was. But he stood damn up as a man. good on him <coughs> for having taken that position and had the best damn discernment that he could have possibly had. Like he wasn't instigated. 
he wasn't looking for a damn fight. It wasn't until they were attacking his ass and he <coughs> was in fear for his ever-loving life that he pulled that damn trigger. And I hate it. I hate it that it resorted to that. I hate it that it... Yeah. Phelps and Ashley. That it came down to that. I hate it that it has divided this country ever more they were so. They sit right here. Because the narrative comes down to white versus black. And in the scheme of things, it is never white versus black. There is always a gray. And it is our job as Americans to I love that. do a boy who had to do what the men failed to do. Exactly. Amen. It is our job as Americans to do the homework before we judge. It's not even our job to fucking judge. And raise up our boys to stand up if they have to. Exactly. If the men aren't going to do it, yeah, like, I've been proud if that was my son. If they had been destroying a building and he had killed them for destroying a building, that's a completely different freaking story. But they were <coughs> going after him. They were down to kill that boy regardless of his color because he stood for something different than what they stood for. He was an opposer to what they believed in. And because of that... Yes, Tales from the Crypt. Because men, of that, he had to make hard choices. And I hate it. I absolutely hate the, the, the position that this kid is stuck in. He had to stand up and do a man's job. And unfortunately, he's not exactly a man, but he's pretty darn close. And in history, men became men a lot younger than they do today. But he wasn't trigger happy. No, like, absolutely he not. He wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm going to kill all no. these motherfuckers. He no. stood up when he absolutely he was backed had into no a corner. no other choice but to defend his life for right. fear of he, loss agree, of concrete. his I mean, not me, but... Own. Other men. I mean, T, you guys hear, you know, Bear talking often about, you know, should women have um, chest rigs and should women have, like, all, all those things. And he's like, if the women are carrying the guns and got the, you know, plates on, they failed. Right. And it's not that we don't, we wouldn't put the plates on and that we no. wouldn't put the carriers on, but we're going to be taking them off our men to do it because they're gone. Right. Because our men would never push us in front. <coughs> you know, I mean, all the men are gone if we're, you know. Now, homies, you know, take a sniper, <laughs> sniper, whatever, job. <laughs> She's taking that sniper position if necessary. But that, that was because T was in the front lines. He was totally out front there. <coughs> because I care about my man. So... And who better I mean, to defend him than you? Right. And I mean, that's the same as Kyle standing out front of that business. He cared about the American dream of anyone can come here in the right way. You can make something of your life. You can have the all American dream. And that's what he was defending was somebody's <coughs> right to the pursuit of happiness. <clears throat> right. I mean, I believe Kyle did absolutely the right thing. I believe he deserves a medal. I don't believe he deserves to go to jail. I believe that the men who should have been there didn't do their job. Yah called men to be there, and they weren't there. Somebody didn't listen to the call of Yah um, to be able to be there when he should have been. Right. Um, and, you know, that's the thing. I'm just going to let them, I don't know if that was what it was, but 
<coughs> he, you know, Kyle did what he was supposed to do because there were other men who were called to be there and weren't. And he we was found defending out, themselves. Like, right. He was, they chased after him. And what the hell do you think would have happened if he hadn't fired back and he had laid there and let them have their will with him? What do you think would happen? Right. And, and I know from our situations here and the people that we've dealt with, <coughs> Yah calls men to be around, to be backup, to be there to defend those who need defending if they listen. Right. And I believe there are a whole lot of men that Yah called to be there who didn't listen before it got to Kyle. Right. A lot of men, a whole lot of men in that area that didn't listen before it got to Kyle. But at some point, it gets to Kyle. Just like it got to David with Goliath. Right. Just like it got to, you know what I mean? Like, we all think, like, men should be, like, there's many people who are called to do things who basically ignore right. Yah's calling. I mean, like I said, we found out one of our great men here came to our rescue <clears throat> didn't know he was coming to our rescue never even understood he was coming to our rescue and then we all talked about our lives and realized he was put in a position to protect us as women didn't even know it but he followed y'all right and he was there to protect us right didn't have to do it because we followed y'all and didn't go where we weren't supposed to be right <coughs> and should there have been <coughs> older guys to take headship of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's not the way the scenario played out. And the scenario played out with the 17-year-old boy fighting for his fucking life. And this is what happens. Long witch. They're used to it. Yeah. PG-13. He put the tactical chicken but on the store. But this is what happens. <coughs> is a young boy that should not be put in this predicament is faced with dying, being killed, or killing others. Absolutely. In fear of his own life. Oh, it's 10, 21, and so it's about to be bedtime. Thank you, honey, so much for that. Here's the deal. You got to sugarcoat my shit. <laughs> I'm not sugarcoating your shit. It's 10, 21 in the evening, and it's bedtime. Yeah, but you're taking over. Would you like to finish your statement? I would. So if y'all don't like the outcome of what happened don't allow shit like that to happen where that's that boy's only choice be a fucking man stand up fight for your country if it's your calling, it's your calling. If it's not, it's your, it's not. But there are certain men in this country that if it's not for you, this country is gonna go to shit. It's gonna go to shit. Because we all know it's the metro areas that run our fucking states. You can flick me all you want to. This is why people don't want Hami. Because Hami will let loose. Pull it back. But it's the metro areas of our states that run our states. So show up 
and vote and make your voices heard and make this country democratic so that we all have our voices heard. And we will not let stuff like this go down. We will not let our states be run by democratic metro areas. But you got to stand up however you can, however you're convicted to do. Whether it be voting or protecting a business or protecting a statue. Do not ever overstep your boundary, but let your voices be heard just like everyone else's voices are heard. And that's all I got to say. I will echo my wife in this. If you don't want 17 year old boys fighting your fights, fight them yourself. I've been saying this longer than I've had a YouTube channel. The horror of my lifetime will be when my son has to step into a play carrier to do my job. Raise your children up in the way that they shall go and they will not depart from it when they are older. However, comma, but, if I can't find the stones to wrap myself in armor and pick up my weapon and go do my job, that doesn't mean condemnation should fall on that 17 year old kid who is doing my job, it means it should fall on me. The world is a shit show right now. It's a bad place Jeez. right now. This it's a hell. it's a bad place right now. I think a lot of people are hoping it's going to get better. And I do. I really do hope it gets better. I don't know how soon it does get better. But that's exactly right. Dark times. And we are the light. I tell you guys all the time, this is not stuff we just talk about. This is stuff we live. We believe this. This is why we do this. And we try and share a portion of our life with y'all each week every day, whenever we can. But there's nobody here posturing. There's nobody here pretending to feel this way. This is just the way that it is here. And it's that way here on property. And it will continue to be that way here on property as the world burns. And so I would just end with this encouragement for y'all. Go be the light. Go be the light. The world needs as many people as possible to stand up, even if they've got nothing, nothing. Just tap into the Father and go be the light. The only thing is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Quit doing nothing. Start doing something every day. We literally have to have meetings so we can scale back all the something we are doing so that we can focus on some of the things that we are doing so that we quit half-assing things because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And I would just beg you to have that same problem. You need to be so invested in so many things that you need to wonder 
what could you possibly pour into next rather than hmm I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do today and I'm like what are we doing in February 2022 but I digress the whole point of this is there are there are no more societal guarantees a 17 year old kid had to do our job our job you know and if it wasn't for 17 year old kids with rifles we'd all be still speaking that we'd all be British citizens right now if it wasn't for 17 year old kids with rifles Amen. 15 year old. I know. I know. Making the stand. So bless that kid. But where were all the multicam warriors? Where were all the militiamen? Right. Where was everybody who said, I've drawn a hard line in the sand? Now I get it. I wasn't there either. That wasn't my town. We've shown up in my town. We have outnumbered the police and the sheriffs combined in my town. When there was an opportunity, when there are opportunities to be the light in my town, we are. So instead of heaping judgment on Kyle Rittenhouse, we should heap judgment on ourselves. And we should use that to adjust our OODA loop to realize that, hey, it's no longer time to talk about doing the things. It's time to start start doing the things. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that as a white person. Yeah, you're an American. I'm an American. And it could have just as easily have been a 17-year-old black kid that stood for America. Yeah. Don't even get me started on skin color. I don't care. I it don't. Just happened to be a seventeen-year-old white kid. I I don't. That did it. I I do not. <laughs> Dudley, yes. I love you, brother. You you guys know I do not even care about skin color. The best people on the My face of this earth. Were black. Like, the best people on the face of this earth come in every color and creed and the worst people on the face of this earth come in every color and creed and uh, skin color has nothing to do with it so with that <sighs> what an interesting way to end a live stream You're done. <laughs> but I still love you. And Bear Nation, we love you all too. And we will see you in the morning for the live stream. In the meanwhile, go be the light. Shalom.